just makes it easier on which ones. Okay, we're on. Good. Okay. Uh, good evening. Welcome to the Sherburn Board of Selectmen meeting of April 3rd, 2014. We'll start off with a reading of the uh, draft agenda by David. Well, first, we start out um, with the vote to approve or amend the agenda and add topics not reasonably anticipated by the chair 48 hours in advance, and then a public comment period, and then a 2013 capital project update. And then at 6.20, we have scheduled um, to talk about the public safety committee that being proposed. And at 6.45, um, these are estimated times. Yep. Uh, consideration of school zone speed reduction. And then around 7 o'clock, um, Ed Wagner, CMD director, to talk about a preview of Chapter 90 and sidewalk work, spring cleanup day, a CMD proposed fee and 2014 capital budget request and uh, fleet management discussion. And then we'll look at uh, the annual town meeting warrant, consider positions, any more positions that we want to look at, and consider board of so selectmen requests for anyone to come in and meet with you. And then any selectmen reports, final approval of ballot questions, discussion of board of selectmen participation in the COA forum, regarding the Pulte development, and then a look at upcoming meetings, um, and then consideration of minutes, warrant, and uh, set the next meeting date, okay. then an executive session. Great. Any amendments to this agenda, gentlemen? Um, cool. Just a question on, on the, uh, the minutes. I saw some email traffic about yeah. some minutes. Yeah, I'm going to bring them on the 17th. Oh, not okay. tonight? No, I didn't have a chance to put okay. them all on. Okay. okay, but we're good. I think we've all reviewed them, right? And, yes. uh, and so you have every bit of input on those. Great. Okay. So other than that, I'll take a motion to uh, approve this agenda. Second. Okay. All, okay. all in favor? Great. I think Mike made the motion. Yeah, <laughs> I think he did. All right, so that opens us up to public comment. Ellie, I think you had something yes, you wanted sorry. to say? Elliot Taylor, 30 North Main Street, but you know that. Uh, I was browsing around on my computer uh, the other day, and I went to sherbanma.org, and uh, I saw that the Board of Health is having a public hearing two weeks from last night about tobacco regulations, and there are 16 pages of things they're going to consider, and. Uh, one is raising the smoking age from 18 to 21. I told him to make it 91. <laughs> Maybe by that time, people will know better or have died from something else. But uh, the, uh, it's uh, going to discuss places where smoking is prohibited and uh, all sorts of good stuff like that. And uh, I'll be very happy when uh, we have prohibition on all tobacco products. My brother died from emphysema, and you don't just up and die. He was in bed for six years on oxygen, and he couldn't even walk from his bed 20 feet to the uh, toilet. I had to empty his urine bottles. So uh, it isn't as though it's, uh, I can, it's my body, I can do what I want. There are plenty of other people around you that are going to suffer because of your damn foolishness. So uh, that's my public comment. Two weeks from last night, uh, April 16th at 8 p.m. And uh, I wish everyone could go to the uh, website, sherbanma.org, and read over these things. Only take you, well, as long as you want to take. And, uh, Thank you. All right. Thanks for pointing that out, <coughs> Elliot. And uh, sorry about your brother's suffering there. No. Uh, great. Any other public comment? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, my name is Rich Cawley. I live at 100 Farm Road. And um, as many of you know, um, one of my passions is to uh, keep Sherman <coughs> safe and beautiful at the same time. Um, I've had some good meetings and discussions with Ed Wagner and uh, David um, <coughs> about some of the things that I think should completely be addressed over the next couple of years. First thing is, instead of um, painting the lines on the road, 
for public safety, they should, instead of painting them in July, they should be painted in April or May. That way they get seven or eight months use out of it instead of paying the same amount of money and only getting four or five months use out of the, uh, out of the uh, line painting on the roads. The second thing is, um, when I moved into the town, one of the things that drew me to the town obviously was the school system, but it was also the roads. Um, at that time, the town of Sherman had spent clearly over a million dollars, and um, they resurfaced all the roads in the town. And I think you're getting to the point in time where that has to be looked at in the uh, upcoming year, uh, maybe 2014, 2015 capital budget. Um, I think the um, just as important as the schools are, I think the uh, visual pollution that one can see around the town with the guardrails caving in, um, the fence that is now fixed uh, alongside uh, Route 27 at the um, at the town dump. Yeah. It's little things like that that welcome people to the town. So um, I applaud what Ed is doing with his people, um, and I applaud what Dave um, is doing in trying to assist in getting all this um, in a very tight budget era that we're in. Um, and the third thing, what was the third thing we talked about today, Ed? Um, uh, well, the signage is really good. Um, I guess that's really about it, but everyone knows my concern. Uh, I'm here to help. I'll volunteer with any committee that, that I can do. And, um, well, I really appreciate that input, and I'm glad you're interacting with these gentlemen, so you're not here complaining about their lack of responsiveness, so that's a, that's oh, a no, good no. sign. That's well, a you know, I did years ago, <laughs> and uh, it, it got the attention that was required. I know the other thing that we discussed. Uh, at one point, I had a meeting last summer uh, with Dave and Ed, and Ed made a comment, well, I don't have any guys in moving a refrigerator. And I said, well, isn't that revenue diversion? Why shouldn't, why should his department's budget have to move refrigerators for the housing for the elderly? Yeah. Why, and why isn't the Parks and Recreation budget handling the ball fields? Why is that coming out of Ed's budget? It seems to me Ed's budget should be for the roadways, the signage, and the safety. Just my opinion. Great. Really appreciate it. Yeah, okay, thank you. Appreciate your caring, too. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Any other public comment? Yes, sir. Sean Fillion, 1 Butler Street. Typically, I would never come here and uh, promote any more committees than the town already has, but I do want to point out, to the best of my knowledge, all, at least in the past eight to ten years, anything that we've spent capital money on, there's at least been a committee that oversees it. I was on the CMD building committee. We have committees at the fire station all the time that spec out trucks. Uh, most of the building capital projects include committees that schools certainly do, and uh, that is with the exception of anything that CMD bug purchases is one person. Uh, so that equipment is always, you know, just specked out by one person. I wonder if there shouldn't be some oversight on that. Great. Well, we're talking about the equipment this evening, so uh, maybe we'll remember to include that as part of the discussion. Okay. Because that's a good point. Thank I you. I assume David's involved in those purchases too. Chief procurement guy here. And yeah. all the purchases, yeah. yeah. Um, the bigger they are, the you have to set up a process. Like um, the ladder track, I'll probably be setting up some sort of procurement committee as a selection committee. But that's the smaller stuff that's buying off a state contract. You normally wouldn't have a committee. All right. Great. Any other public comment while we're here? All right. We'll uh, move on. I'm sorry? I said it hit 50 today. Oh, happy birthday. No. <laughs> oh. oh, I guess 50 at long. <laughs> I was going to say, you don't look a day over 39. Yeah, oh, no. <laughs> now, my twin sister's 39. There you go. There you go. All right, good. Uh, so that moves us to capital project update, which is a nice segue from Mr. Colleen over there. Uh, basically, we've been giving you a periodic update of where we are in last year's capital projects. So I was just handing out this um, newly updated thing to show show where we're at. Yep. Um, and I think we're uh, we're doing pretty good. I didn't know if you any, had any questions on um, anything. I, 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 just on the command vehicle, 
We are going to get town markings on that thing at some point sooner than later. Yeah, I so talked to the chief. Um, it. Yeah, about getting some markings on along the front door. Yeah. Yeah. Good. And he, he agreed to that. Yeah. All right. And we, um, you know, in the Whitney easement, do we know when that's usable? And if we'll have park parking restrictions over I there. I just wonder when the town's rights uh, start. I don't know. That would be a good question to find out, right? So, David, on the um, on the Woodland Street, Mill Street, Woodland, Goulding Street, West intersections. Yes. Contract awarded to Green International Inc. Projected start date 10-1-13, but we ended up not really engineering the uh, Woodland Mill intersection we did some some traffic improvements instead yeah, yeah. so is is there work ongoing with that or the other intersection it's the other intersection yeah uh, the the golding street west intersection so has there been any work done under that contract since october or um by the engineering company yeah yeah they've they've looked into um the possibility of the truck exclusion that keeps people have been asking about and then on golding street um ed could probably answer best because he's dealing with the engineer but there so, has been. So why work. did the engineering company use the engineering budget to look into the truck exclusion? I thought they were going to engineer the intersection. Well, the woodland, the, a truck exclusion on woodland. No, I understand, but I mean, we don't need the engineers to look into the truck exclusion on woodland. We need them to do engineering work. So I'm just wondering, was that something that they were scoped for, or they're just spending the engineering budget on that? Um, I think the truck exclusion was discussed at one time, that that's what they had requested originally was a truck exclusion. No, no, I know that's been floating around out there. I just right. never thought you'd, you know, we'd want to have an engineering firm dealing with that rather than dealing with what I thought was going to be a redesign of that intersection. So it sounds like they've had a contract for six months and we don't have any plans or proposals from them yet. I don't think we have anything. We have, a, oh, uh, con good. we have a concept design for the intersection of Woodland and uh, Goulding. And that concept design was given to traffic safety two meetings ago, yeah. Yeah. where it's under discussion of uh, which way they want to go. And uh, from there, we'll be doing takeoffs for cost estimates. Yeah, it would be good to, to get some more information on that at a future meeting, just have uh, you know at least, at least some kind of presentation of that, even if it's not. Uh, a final presentation just so folks could see that. Before all that stuff here. Yeah. So if I could make a comment, I don't have the wording in front of me in the article, but the truck exclusion, A, would need to be researched by a traffic engineer. I mean, we can't just go arbitrarily throw up a truck exclusion and the state would not accept that. Uh, and that, that certainly was part of the early discussions of the issues with that stretch of Woodland Street was the high truck traffic. Oh, understood that. That's so, but that's been in the works for years. People have wanted the truck. No, no, experience. no, no. That no. The the one that's been in the years, that was on Western Avenue. This is no Woodland Street as well. When I was on planning board, Woodland Street was a problem, right. and they redesigned the intersection with uh, Washington Street. Right. Oh, that was crazy. so. It was certainly that's a discussion, and and they were asked to look at that under, you know, the promise that we were looking at both intersections and. I bet, if we, I bet if we knew where the files were and could dig them out, we'd have all that information on, on why we couldn't get a truck exclusion then. But I think that, I think one of the things was we couldn't find anything that was a firm denial from the state stating why you couldn't. Cause I, don't, I don't think it was ever really. It may not have ever been, been officially denied. And I think that's what um, I committed to um, Mr. Days here was that we would find out exactly what the problem is yeah. and chase down those. Because that, because the laws of why. Yeah, I mean, my, my point is not that that's not a good idea to find that out, and if Sean's right and you need an engineer to do it, that's great. But my understanding of that budget item at town meeting was it was engineering design, and the idea was they were going to redesign the intersection. In fact, there was more money left in the contract because they didn't have to focus as much on Mill and Woodlands. So yeah. I'm just concerned that we're getting what we paid for. But I think at that point, there was discussion that we were moving money Understood. towards this engine towards Woodland, I mean towards Golding and looking at the truck exclusion. Yeah. Okay, that's, if that's what it's for. Yeah, if I recall correctly, Mike, um, when we met about, the, we spoke about this at traffic safety, we included the truck exclusion in, in the engineering study. Okay. That, was, that was part of this, the discussion, so um, I, I couldn't recall verbatim. But, and this is researching the possibility of a truck exclusion, right. it's not necessarily applying for right. one, right? right. 
right? Correct. It's just knowing what's involved and, and right. not what the possibilities are. That's right. Well, you, you have to right. find out whether you you meet the certain warrants that would say, okay, if you meet this, this, and this, you can't go to the state. And and depending on whether we can qualify and get the state to approve a truck exclusion there, that determines whether the 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 three stopway signs that we put up at Mill and Woodland whether that's sufficient. If we don't do the truck exclusion, we may have to revisit that intersection. We did a simple fix, a cheap fix. Yeah, the, but the key, I think what, one of the key points was that there was this total Woodland Street engineering study, study approved by t at town meeting. And then because we did the all-way stop, that bit part of the scope right. was presumably eliminated, or at least that was my understanding. Right. So. Uh, I'm with you in, in that part of the understanding. And whether we diver are diverting or whether those funds included some evaluation of the potential for a truck exclusion, I, I don't recall those details, but it sounds like maybe that was the case. And, and just from a, just sort of a standpoint of, you know, people who vote at town meeting and see these articles, it's, so now it's almost the next town meeting. Yes. And we had a contract, it was, fi it was finally awarded, I guess, in October, it's six months later, so we should be making more progress on this. This is one that, that I happen to be more aware of than some others, right. but just in general, we should be getting right. more progress on right. you, uh, items that get voted at town meeting to make sure they get done at least by the next yeah. town meeting if possible. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Um, Elliot, yes, sir. When it comes to truck exclusions, you've got to have a reasonable alternate route. And uh, you just can't say, could buy trucks. You've no. got to have a. I don't know what the uh, state regulations are. So many miles uh, uh, maximum, or well, that's what will come out of whatever this engineer is doing. I'm sure. Um, You'll, any truck exclusion will put them past my house. So yeah. We know that. Good. Yeah. Well, we're targeting them to go by your house, Elliot. You know that. No, just kidding. Um, <clears throat> Speaking of things that linger on, of course, the HVAC thing, which is now carried into the, this year, did anybody get a uh, find out what happened with the advisory on this last night, going for the additional funding? So we don't. Yeah, let me look that up. Okay. I don't want to speak without having okay. it in front of me. Okay. Okay. Um, good. And, and the other <laughs> thing was when we reviewed it with Sean, we didn't have the full information, but just one thought, just while we're on it and looking at this. Let's make sure in the, what the engineer or whatever the numbers are that we're looking at there, that there was, in fact, no um, contingency built in there. Because the two pages that I was looking at that we talked about last week, they, they had profit and contingency built into their, those half dozen buckets of numbers that they were showing. And, but we didn't have the, what, what we're looking at now. So that, that's just a reminder on that. Okay. Anything else on uh, the capital? project update? Just my, my two cents is that this is a very helpful report and I wonder if I could request to get this sent to the board or if the board doesn't want it and at least to me on a on a monthly basis. Yeah. That way I can Great see idea. how the, the things are progressing, all, all these things are progressing and, and take some satisfaction for seeing things being done. Moving, yeah. Well, I think the problem that we, we were looking at yeah, last year was they, the, they got approval and then they sat, the money sat around and we were all looking, well, who brought this and who was supposed to be doing this? We didn't yeah. really know who was going to be walking it through, so that is that is important to do that. Yeah. But now you have a department listed and action items. So all that stuff. All I'm saying is that this is very useful, but this is right. the first time I've seen this, or at least the first I've seen it in, a, in quite we a We had it earlier, yeah, a few months back, I think he's been every so couple I still of months. Have it. Yeah. yeah, but getting it monthly would be great. I think we think that's a great well, idea. I think the well, last time we had it, we suggested adding a column with the responsible parties, yeah. or maybe that was the time before, but it's a good yes. piece of work. Yeah. <laughs> Diane, before we get too far, uh, we were going to have the map in here. All right. Um, okay, so then that puts us into consideration of public safety committee discussion. So I'll turn my head to my favorite town <coughs> administrator over there. Yeah. Um, can we, uh, can we, before we move on, can I, 
update you on the fire department HVAC. Oh, sure. Advisory. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, advisory elected not to revote Article 8, Line 8, okay. FD HVAC repair. Okay. So we're dealing with that on the uh, town meeting floor. Yes. Okay. And we have taken the precaution of putting that on the ballot as one of the yes. alternative. Right, which we're going to finalize tonight, that ballot. Will, prop yep. two and a half debt exclusion right. overrides. Right. So we then with the building, all the building projects. Yeah, so we covered it as well as we can. Okay. All right. Uh, so on, on the public safety committee, this is something that's been um, talked about for, as far as I know, more than a year. Yep. And um, this kind of committee would have been helpful in that that sort of transition from once a capital item is approved, uh, who's going to be taking it forward from there. Um, also, it would be, be good for other committees to be bouncing things off it. And I, I just didn't know whether we wanted, whether it was going to be a staff committee, an appointed committee, a mix of staff and the public, or, or what we had in mind. And I wanted to try to get the, um, so the membership down and then um, what sort of charge that we pictured, and then I would put the formal documents together to bring it back. So, that's what we based on sort of the rough idea of what we've been thinking, or what you've been thinking, or what I, I think you've been thinking, and you think I've been thinking, <laughs> if you will, um, just uh, rough that out for us here for discussion purposes. Well, right now we were uh, we were thinking that um, those departments involved in delivering public safety services, PD, FD, uh, CM and D, um, maybe a school rep, council on aging, and the town administrator's office, um, that at least those people would be on this. That would be the core, if not the complete, depending on how, what we think, right? right? But at least the right. core of a public safety committee, uh, which is represents the practice experts, if you right. will, on, on safety issues. Right. Yep. Similar to... Um, there's an emergency management committee too, right? Yeah. And that's this is a LEPC, local emergency management committee, and then we also belong to an REPC, regional emergency okay. management. So something similar to that where the, the staff of the um, departments that would, are actually involved in fixing the problems yep. are involved in it. And so uh, in our thinking that the existing for example, traffic safety is a bylaw determined entity. Mm -hmm. we, we would be violating the bylaws. We would retain its its functionality, but we would have it working up through this overarching public safety committee. Right. I think I mean, is one one approach that we're right because the, what traffic safety is charged with is is traffic safety, yeah. and there are other things that when something comes out of traffic safety, you might want to bounce off. How does this fit in? to our whole public safety vision. Make, I, I make a suggestion that you include the Board of Health on anything that's doing public idea. safety. Right, right, yeah. right, right, right. That's great. So I, I, I think it's a great concept that I'd like to see us move forward on sooner than later. I don't know that we have three of the public safety representatives out here. I'm not trying to put you, Sean, on the spot, but um, Chief's not here. But you're shaking your head. Ed shaking his head. I think the fire chief. Well, Ed shaking his head. He was falling asleep, Peter. <laughs> if you the police chief shaking his head. So I think they, they, they're embracing the concept here. Right. Right. Yeah. So if you wanted, um, you know, you could start with. You could go with the full fledged committee and do official appointments. You could have us start as a task force just under the administrator, where they're, we name them. It's not like a. It's not a public meeting thing. It's just yeah, an but I, I guess what I'd like to see is that really that this group, this committee, whatever its structure is, takes ownership of all of these ancillary things. Mm -hmm. And so to the extent we can make that ownership uh, more real, whether it's by us appointing this group or as a task force, you, I, you know. Well, that forces the... So, so the meetings would be compliant with open meeting laws and... Or they should anyway. 
I mean, I think it's well, not if it's an administrator. Yeah. If we're just staff, internal staff talking about an issue, but if it's a committee that you want reporting out to you, then that should be an actual committee appointed yeah. by the slack. I don't know. Any thoughts uh, from the <coughs> just committee members? <coughs> committee members? Yeah. I, I, I think I'd agree that um, it would be critical to have public involvement. Um, and, I, and actually, I think I've said, I actually said this before when we were discussing this, it would probably be a good idea to have a few residents sit on, uh -huh. uh, on this type of committee. Frankly, if I have a few people in mind that would, I think would fit very well on a committee like this. Yes. Good. Sean? Uh, well, I have several comments, but I'm just going to make one on what you just said. If you make that an open committee that's subject to those open meeting laws, yes. in theory at any point, possibly even during an incident, you're not violating the open meeting while the police chief, fire chief, CMD director are all standing around making a decision. That's an interesting point. Um, hmm. Well, they should be able to do that. They need to be able to do that. They're probably not deliberating that group, about. Yeah, they're not delivering about policy, though, which is really what, right. what that Well, matters. they may have to make a policy decision right there, the whole group. <clears throat> it may not be that they have 48 hours to host a meeting. To well, then it clearly it's an emergency yeah. for the open meeting law. Yeah, I was going to say, I think in an emergency situation with Trump, open meeting law. So. <clears throat> yeah, so well, well, maybe we want to be careful in defining the scope, the, the yeah. charge of this committee, that something like Sean just described would not be within the charge of the committee. How to deal with a particular individual incident wouldn't be, but policy would be. And if I could just add to that, then I'll leave my comments. You're, the committee, at that point, you have a bunch of employees who are, you know, tasked with those duties, mixed with some volunteers that have no responsibility whatsoever other than to vote. So that, that's kind of a slippery slope there a little bit. I mean, we deal with that anyway with, with your, on the traffic safety. It's just opposite. The voting members are all volunteers. So, th so these are all good issues. And I think what we need to do is go back, come up with a really you know finite structure that we think makes best sense, including the types of folks that Rick says make sense and so forth, yeah. and which committees would work up through them and whether or not we appoint them and so forth and how we deal with these open meeting challenges. Okay. And, and then, because I think I'd like to see us do that sooner than later and, and make it happen. Yeah, and, the, and the, the one thing I'm a little troubled with, Peter, in this idea, and, and you mentioned it when you talked about traffic safety reporting, I, I don't want to create another layer of bureaucracy that sort of prevents things from happening and or, you know, filters information before it gets out to the public or up to us. So we have to be I guess careful that that is not what's going to happen. And maybe in the long run, we, you know, ask the town to rethink what the traffic safety committee does or how it's organized. Well, and it's not just picking on the traffic, you know, traffic safety. There are these other entities that we have that can add value that need maybe a little more guidance or something than we're providing. Yeah, we're not, not to pick, but they're in a unique situation, as you yeah. pointed out, because it, it's a committee created by bylaw. By that's right. Yeah, and I think that's what we had talked about before was ideally that traffic safety committee, if it was broadened, but we'd be looking at the bylaw change. And, yeah. and the, so we said, well, maybe to, to we don't know if there's a safety need committee yet or, or not. public safety committee. Right, yeah. right. So, so I think we're mostly on the same page in terms of the objective. Now how we go about doing it is to be determined and what its charge is and so forth. Okay. And, and, and in rethinking it, you may think, you know, I still am leery of it being an appointed committee by the right. you know. Okay. So I'll, uh, I'll put together a model to bring yeah. back on another. Yeah, yeah I think that'd be Elliot, I saw your hand up. I was going to say this committee will make recommendations to the selectmen. So the committee doesn't have any power to go out and do this, that, and whatever else, or I don't know. We they haven't will really make recommendations to the selectmen, and you will have the final say on their recommendations. I think we're figuring that out. I think that's part of what we need to figure and, out. And it's probably the case that if it was a recommendation dealing with the police or the fire department, that the chiefs who had the authority to do those things would be the ones who took those recommendations, and so not the selectmen and CMD. Or, or, or. Potentially, yeah. yeah. Well, over the years, that relationship and that communication has, has, has changed. And it's changed uh, mainly because of the people who 
sit here and sit <coughs> here and you know people on the, on the committee and the, you know at a CMD and it really kind of depends on what everybody's bandwidth is and and our feeling is that if uh, is that we need to we need to, there there needs to be control of the resources so when head of CMD is getting hit with 15 different demands and requests uh, and, and the bandwidth gets used up, that's no good. And that's the way it has been in the, in the past in certain, you know, in certain um, points in time over the past 20 years. Um, we're very concerned about that and sensitive to that. So if at any time you all you all feel that that isn't uh, working out, uh, and you want us to come directly to you with each and every thing. You know, we, we will do that. I'm pretty but sure none of us want. Yeah, I don't think we're looking for that. But in the meantime, we're 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 going to use our best judgment, and and so far, I think our best judgment works pretty well in terms of whether you know, call that, you know, tell them about the telephone pole. It's it, whatever. Yeah, and one easy way to do that, to get more information up, is really just to circulate the minutes. I mean, I know, I assume there are minutes, and sometimes we get them, sometimes I don't know if we do get them, but it'd be helpful to get, you know, periodic minutes. Okay. Not, not if you don't routinely keep them, but I think most boards no, do keep minutes. Yeah. yeah, so we get a bunch in the reading file from different groups. It's just, it's just a way to keep abreast of what's going on. Yeah. So what would you, what would you prefer? Well, well uh, we drop off a set for the town clerk, we also drop off a set for them. <coughs> yeah, if you just give much. it to leave it with yeah, Diane, it'll get into the file that we occasionally look at. Okay. It would be helpful as far as minutes. But just so you understand, we're not trying to step on anybody's toes. We're not trying to create more work nor more bureaucracy. But at least from my perspective, one of the most important responsibilities to have to sit at this table is the safety of everybody in town and its employees and so forth. So to the extent we can continue to enhance that, and it sounds like this is a good concept here, to facilitate, make the Traffic Safety Committee more effective and with better guidance than we otherwise can provide. I, I think that makes sense. And I know you have folks from the, you know, the subject matter experts serving with you or sitting in on your meetings quite frequently, but this helps formalize that. And there are these other, I don't know if I'd call them splinter committees, but some of these other groups out there that need to be brought in so that we're all on the same page. And, and I think this is one of the ways to do that at least so far from what I'm understanding. So. I, I have some reservations here. Uh, <clears throat> and I articulate them this way. I think traffic safety should have access whenever they want it to the Board of Selectmen. And that there are decisions that are made that need the input of the people and therefore coming to the Board of Selectmen is a way for them to touch base with the voters of the community. So I'm hesitant about this business that they report to the Public Safety Committee. I mean, the way we set it up was that the Traffic Safety Committee would have citizens with the professional staff, the, the chiefs, work as ex officio members, but we'd leave it to the citizens uh, in this committee. But now we're going to have this committee report to the same people who are the ex officio members. That, that kind of upends the whole, the whole original concept. Uh, I, uh, I don't have a problem with people submitting information to anybody and everybody. And many of the recommendations that traffic safety would make would pertain to the different chiefs, the red chief and the blue chief and so on, but not all. And so I want to 
put some caveats in here that when traffic safety makes a recommendation that pertains to more general issues affecting the community as a whole, they, they should be bringing those issues to us and not, not just to uh, this uh, overarching committee. And, and the same thing with the Public Safety Committee. If they reach a conclusion that, that something needs to be done, let's say, in the police department, and the, 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 the chief agrees, it, does it get implemented? Or does that committee come to us with the chief and say, hey, we want to you know, change the police department and do all these things? Do we have a role in that? And it's not just us having a role in it, because if it comes here, then the public knows about it, then it's on an agenda, people are aware of it. And if it's on an agenda, somebody can come and comment on it and so on. It looks like that this would take a lot of, of things that would otherwise be on an agenda somewhere and kind of take it offline and more more behind the scenes. And in democracy, it's you're better off having everything out there with people knowing what's going on. I, I don't know, Paul. I mean, we, we've, I know we had a discussion six months ago about this committee, but it seems to me that it's valuable to have people who think about these things planning. Even if it's not, I, I understand your point about particular issues, but if there's some planning or strategic thinking that they can do from their expertise and then bring it to a public meeting, that's a valuable exercise. Yes, but where, where's the public meeting part in here? The way the discussion was going is uh, traffic safety will come up with an idea. Traffic safety will report it to the public safety committee. The public safety committee, because we have strong chiefs, can go ahead and implement it. So all this gets done. Well, I, yeah, we haven't. Sure they I don't can think implement we, things that need our mm -hmm. vote, Paul. Then, and then we read about it in the minutes, and that that just seems to me a little, a little too, outside the 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 domain of public I mean, involvement. We, we couldn't we couldn't implement anything that wasn't already in our charge. Right. I mean, so so that's we part of what we we still have to evaluate how that works. Um, and even just to talk about traffic safety, I don't know how, I, I mean, since I've been on the board, we got to inviting committees and we had you come to us a couple of times now, I think, and it's been great. Um, I don't know how often you did that before. Uh, I don't think you did it very often before. So I, I think it's the effort of the board to make sure that the communication and the public interaction takes place that I, I you know it doesn't sound like it was happening too much before and but again it's still you know we're still trying to figure out how the uh, factoring in all of these types of comments how right. best to do this and but it, it know, wasn't she, um, I just, just one thing it, it wasn't to make traffic safety report to this committee I don't think we no. well I, I use that when I first read into it. So I don't know how they fit into this structure, but right. an example of what this committee would be doing would be, just as Mike's saying, planning ahead. How do we fight fires and what equipment do we need for fighting the fires, et cetera, et cetera. Those are longer term things. Yes, Chief. A few things. Uh, first and foremost, if, if we recall correctly, um, the Collins Institute did this report for the, for the 10th. Collins Institute um, talked about how the town has too many committees and that we should reduce the number of committees. And there are plenty of committees in town, and I can't name them all, that are duplicitous. And to Paul's point, when you mentioned traffic safety, it becomes rather redundant when you have a Western Avenue intersection committee discussing traffic safety issues and on top of it having a traffic safety committee. So when I don't mind going to meetings. I enjoy interacting with the community members. I enjoy, you know, my, my role as the chief, but I don't enjoy going to two separate meetings about the, the same, same issue. Thing. Yeah, I agree. And, and frankly, um, I, don't, I never saw a public safety committee as, as a governing group that would make ultimate decisions. 
I saw it as a means to have an umbrella group and allow for uh, you know, one, two, three meetings every quarter so we could discuss all public safety matters with public input. Here, here it is, here are, here are dates. I mean, let's be honest, you guys have enough trouble you know, getting, getting to these meetings sometimes. You have, you have work to do in the private sector and you know, it's difficult for residents to make 15 different meetings about one topic. So I think it, it's just a way of bringing the community together and discussing public safety issues at one big meeting. But I don't, it's, it's pretty broad. I mean, for example, we get, um, you know how we get points back, refund credits from the insurance company. Yep. Yep. We already had this verified that if we had a safety committee that, that quarterly reviewed the loss runs of, you know, that's employee loss runs or, or equipment loss runs, that we would get credit back on that. So that's an easy thing to do that, you know, I have to form at least something that has some sort of semblance of a safety committee, even if it's just us meeting, you know, in the hallway to be able to get that credit. But this would... Sure, in. <laughs> but this is what we had, um, we had passed on to them that, you know, what about this type of safety committee? Would, would this qualify? And they said, yes, if you're looking at insurance related issues then but I just want to, it's big it's different than just traffic yes yes but again my my two cents is that I'd like to I'm not opposed to the committee I just want that you all to, to come to board of selectmen's meetings on a regular basis even if it's not especially especially required by statute that you come to us on a particular thing so if you're you're going to decide to uh, you know paint all the public safety buildings purple so people can see them easily in town, and you decide that, and you're getting all ready to do this, I don't want to be driving down North Main Street and see a purple fire station and saying, "Wow, how how did that happen?" Well, how many times do I have station do you get pulled over? <laughs> 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 Pills of purple, but not fire. <laughs> well, it's never going to happen that way. And it never, it never has, really, honestly. You never have to worry about that. We serve at your pleasure, right? And when we get together and talk about stuff, we always think about how to hone it down so that we can bring it to you. That's, that's the way we operate. We don't operate outside of that. that we, we are here to write recommendations to you. That's, that's kind of what we do. And if, we, and if there's something that comes in that, that's over the transom, oh gee, that's got to get done, that we feel you don't need to wait. Small stuff will get it. You know, when, again, when the bandwidth is right, Personalities. If it if it works, then then we'll we'll get it done and take it off the plate. But but, but as long as I've been on the team, which is sorry, man, like the last twenty years or something, like that, it's always been that. It's always yeah, been I, that. I just want to preserve that. I mean, yeah, that's, well, that's you, been wonderful. You, that there is no worry. So, I, I want to see that sort of embedded in this charge and not have them, you know, quote, report to the public safety committee. Yeah, just don't. Yeah. I mean, yeah, this I is a great conversation and everything, but. But that's something you don't have to worry about. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I still think then we run the risk. It doesn't have to be a reporting relationship, but we shouldn't have, as somebody, I think the chief just put it, we shouldn't have two committees that are making decisions on the same thing. I also think we need some stuff to be things that David can deal with and tell us about rather than having it all come to us. There are things we have to decide, but we've just got to get better about letting go of some things and letting David take care of them when there are things that, are, that David can take care of without needing a lot of, a lot of input from us. Well, that really was the point of the Collins Report, that all these committees were essentially doing little bits and pieces of the town administrator's job. If we eliminated those committees, the idea was to return these functions back to what should be a stronger town administrator. That was, that was the thrust. So you've got the town administrator who's suggesting we form this committee so they can provide him with input. I'm going to support that idea. I think it's a good idea. 
Again, I'm, I'm not opposed to the idea. I want to embed in the idea <coughs> this business that the traffic safety can continue like they have in the past to come to us with issues of concern and that the, the uh, Public Safety Committee will also come to us with issues of concern. Yeah, I don't think anybody's disputing that. We, we, we don't want right. to be caught up in the minutiae, uh, obviously, and that's what also the Collins says we shouldn't be doing. Um, and what our uh, one of the articles says we're, we, we shouldn't be doing. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, the, um, but I think w what it is, is if you could put forward, you know, factor in all this kind of stuff, communicate with these guys, and, and here's how you think it ought to be, here are some things further to consider, right. provide that to us a couple of days in advance of the meeting that we will discuss it. I just, we can I can't even it. count on one hand the number of times in the last year that we've said, oh, that would be good to go to yeah. the public safety meeting. Yeah. When the beavers are, we're getting calls on beavers. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's something that would be good. So we meet as staff, but it would be good if there was a... Yeah, it's probably well, we had the, we the hunting proposal. <laughs> That's right. The hunting crowd. <laughs> stuff that so has so anything to do with traffic. That's right. 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 But, I mean, but, but, crosses, but crosses the number of departments. But, but even... Even when we talk about, you know, the communications and issues like that, it makes a lot more sense to, to have the subject matter experts sit in a group can't come up with the answer, then you make a decision to hire a consultant. Um, I think that gives us an opportunity to avoid a lot of uh, uh, situations that we're currently running into. We're paying for. Okay, good. On that note. Right, you good? You ready to move on? To <laughs> well, the next item is a, a perfect example of something coming out of the traffic safety. And uh, I, I not sure where it had actually originated to, but it was brought to traffic safety. They reviewed it, they discussed it, and then um, now it's being brought to you for your consideration. Okay, that's, so we that's have the our, evolution of somebody want to <coughs> talk about it on the in front of the mic here, <coughs> just because it's you know people are going to drive through town and say, Whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 what's going on here? Oh. We're hoping they will do that. All right, so what we're, we're up to the consideration of school speed zone reduction, which uh, basically means some signs oh, wait, around wait, certain wait. roadways. Wait, yep. with, the, um, with the um, installation of the emergency access road, um, the chief had brought it to our attention that it would be a good opportunity to expand and install a school zone surrounding Pine Hill. So what this would involve is us installing signage on South Main, on um, North Main, on two different areas, and then one up on Elliott Street. So vehicles coming in from Elliott before they hit the Pine Hill Access Road um, would be reduced to a 20 mile an hour between the hours of 7.30 and 8.30, and 1.30, 2.30. Or 2.30 So, so I have a picture of the That's a, that's a picture of the signs, signage. You know, um, would it say school zone or just school is all it has to say? That's how they do it now. Yep, that's the standard school zone sign. Okay. And so where these signs would go, I, and I, I don't know, we have this map over there of the town, if that's of any assistance to us. <coughs> yeah, I thought one we'll sign was out. missing. The, the, the needed one more sign, because somebody could go down Main Street, take a left on Butler, and end up being in the school zone without ever encountering a sign at all. Ah. And so this stuff to signs. work for you be to, for the police to be able to enforce it if the guy can plead he had no knowledge because there was never any signs that he encountered during his route you you, you won't be able to enforce it so if i if i'm looking at these untitled place mark that's where you're planning yes. to put the signs yeah and so one we're, we're allowed to extend 200 feet from the entrance or the, the property access road that's not on here right um, okay, so that gets you almost to the intersection of what, Elliott and uh, Lake Street, but you're still 100 feet. We, yeah, it would be placed probably it. before um, Butler Street. 
So before Butler Street. So what Paul's talking about. Yeah, and I would about pick a spot there that wouldn't is, interfere with the red light. Is, is somebody could come this way and through Butler Street and turn right or left and not know he or she was in a school zone. Right? I think that's a valid yeah, point. That's what I'm, yeah. I'm saying. Just as a legal matter, the, a, a defendant in, a, in an enforcement action can plead no knowledge if there are no signs. It's a 200-foot window, you said, yep. on either side? So that stretch of Butler Street is way more than 200 feet from either of those driveways. You have the school property that extends down, then you also have the Pine Hill Access, Emergency Access Road that comes in. There's a strip of land down through there which allows us to do it. Uh, we do have a certain um, space in between. Um, and speaking with the state, they indicated to me that uh, rather than having a school zone, and a school zone, school zone, and a school zone, just to encompass it into one group. I, I mean, what troubles me by this is I think I think it's a good idea to have safety near schools. That that access road is explicitly intended not to be used except in an emergency situation, and yet you would slow traffic along that stretch just routinely during school hours. We don't have kids who walk to school, so we don't have a sidewalk there for kids to walk to school. We, we actually do have, and I actually uh, wasn't even aware that that was brought up at a uh, traffic safety meeting, that we do have uh, some students that walk to Pine Hill from Butler Street. And they walk up that access drive? Uh, they don't walk up the access drive, but they walk down the sidewalk that's on that side of, of Elliott Street to the main entrance at, at, um, at Pine Hill. Yeah, and, and I guess what I'm saying, uh, Chief, is that the access route mm -hmm. is not intended for routine use. And I think really what's going on here is there's going to be a speed trap set up with people who you know are going to be caught unawares by this and also slow their commute down. I mean, I can see the North and South Main Street is a little bit of a concern, too, because we really don't have that issue for people heading north-south. But I also know that traffic only goes 20 miles an hour during those hours anyway, so it probably you know, draws people's attention to the situation, maybe prevents them from trying to run that red light or something. But, um, I mean, I, I would think you'd want to stop that uh, school zone someplace closer to Butler Street or even closer to the Pine Hill driveway and just pick up the area in front of the driveway. Well, I think, I think from my perspective, um, and I appreciate your, your point, Mike, um, if, if we ever were put in a situation where we did have an emergency um, and we had to use that access road, um, I think it would only benefit uh, emergency responders if we had a, a lower speed limit. Yeah, but I, I don't know that you inconvenience so many people for such a long period of time on that. And if there was ever a, an emergency, you'd have an officer stationed out at the intersections to stop traffic or slow traffic, whatever was, was necessary. I know you would. I'm just one person, but that's that's sure. my view on it. So that. you're saying you have the ability to put the signs and make the, this whole stretch that you've outlined as a, as a school zone, and it would only apply in those uh, two hours a day or whatever, right. uh, Monday through Friday. Um, and remember when we did the three the all stop on Woodland and Mill, we did that on a trial basis for a period of time. I mean, we put the signs in, we did a trial basis. Just to, you know, Mike's concern and point is the inconvenience factor that might surface here. We don't really know whether that's a real inconvenience. I mean. Well, we only know from seeing people drive that street during those rapidly. hours that it's, that you can drive faster than 20 miles an hour along that stretch. I don't know that you can on Main Street, but you certainly can along on that, that stretch. stretch of Elliott Street. Well, I, I th John. You got about an 80% chance you're going to get stopped at the light or the split, so it doesn't really matter how fast. You go in that direction. Unless you're going east. If you're going east, you, you don't. Well, I, I don't want to slow down traffic through town during commuter hours because it's bad enough as it is. Well, what I would say to that too, Mike, is, is the intersection um, at Lake and Elliott is definitely the most dangerous intersection we have in town, and I could make a, a strong... Um, Point to say that that's most likely due to the people that speed uh, during those times that, that you're referring to. Uh, people do travel far beyond the speed, the current speed limit um, on a, a portion of Elliott Street. So, so frankly, from my perspective, reducing the speed limit during that, that time of the day is, is actually a public safety benefit to the town. It might be an inconvenience, and 
you know, I've said this before, um, safety doesn't, uh, safety always trumps convenience for me. Well, so. I mean, we could do a town-wide 20 mile an hour speed limit and tie pillows to the outside of our kids too, but I mean, that you have to draw a line someplace. I'm trying to strike a balance here between convenience and safety. I agree with you that that intersection is very dangerous and I'm sure you're right that people speed through it. This is going to do nothing to stop that because it actually stops short of that intersection. So somebody speeding through the intersection would come on a, a slowdown sign and they'd have to slow down at that point or go in the other direction. They would see the end of the speed limit and they'd immediately accelerate because they were slowed down for the previous stretch. So that doesn't do anything for your intersection. I think there's other problems with that intersection. I'd love to see traffic safety solve that intersection. It's very dangerous. But Not any money? What? No, no. We, we're spending it on other stuff. Well, I, I, again, the other stuff. I, again, I think I disagree. People approaching that intersection at 20 miles an hour during that, that uh, time of day, they're not going to get to Lake Street and all of a sudden hop on the gas and do it 50 miles an hour. I just, I just don't see that happen. Well, let's discuss this, though, because that really is that, that, that really is the key point. Will this help that intersection, uh, or will uh, the school zone speed limit not help that intersection? Because as far as traffic safety is concerned, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to moderate the traffic that speeds through that intersection. And we need to figure out whether that's going to really improve. Does traffic safety, have you weighed in on this? Have you? Oh, yeah. And you're in support of do, we're doing this? I mean, we, obviously, you guys are, are convinced that that. No, I, I, well, I, I'm in support of it, subject to seeing how it works a little bit, at least on that, the one outlier here that, you know, Mike's raised a good point, um, going, particularly going east in the morning. So traffic safety has endorsed this? Yes. Yeah, we sent a motion to the selection on January 15th saying that we endorsed it. All right. I, I remember that. Mm -hmm. But in addition to the, to the legal defect about the sign through the entrance, that has no, no signage. The other legal point I would make is that school zones are, exist to protect schools, not to control speed generally for unrelated intersections. But that may be an important dividend, but I, I need to ask the fundamental question is, will this improve the safety for the public school children? Sure, there are buses that travel Lake Street onto Elliott and Elliott Street onto Lake Street during the morning hours and afternoon hours, so I would say yes. And then that meets the, the, the legal test, and so then I can, I can support it as long as we fix the other legal defect. And so what do you need from us? Um, an official vote? Well, I like the idea of, of trying it. Yeah. But I, I don't want to do an official vote until we really have a public hearing uh, so that the right. butters know what's going on, so that the, uh, uh, the parents, the teachers, the, I like to have the schools here, I'd like to let the, the public be heard. Even on the, the intersection stop signs that we put on Mill Street, uh, two weeks later I got a phone call from someone saying, you know, why is there a stop sign here? I'm opposed to it. Because I've been driving this road for you know 20 years, and all of a sudden I found a, a stop sign. So would you be suggesting an official public hearing where yeah. we send out notice, advertise, and, uh, yeah, and, and all that, and maybe specifically invite the the, uh, the butters, somebody from the school, and somebody from the school, yeah, and 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 the butters around that road, who yeah, some of whom had some some uh, strong uh, views about the road to begin with. If we're going to change things that affect. <coughs> them so directly, they, sh they should be here with the opportunity to be here. I think we did forget to mention that we were communicating with the superintendent about it, too. Oh, you, yeah. You, you, yeah. The yeah. superintendent yeah. supports, supports this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Elliot, you had a brief comment? Yeah. Uh, Elliot Street and Lake Street should have a traffic light, period. All right, but that's not what we're talking about tonight. But no, but, but it's, it's, but it's a good, it's a good point. Because if that intersection is going to be controlled, that's really probably the safest way to do it, even though I know people in town don't want a traffic light. Either that or a four-way stop. 
Yes, sir. So um, then I have two comments. We can't afford to replace the light we have. <laughs> so let's not talk about Lake and Elliot yet. Um, we'll waste uh, and a, just a comment dollars. about inviting the entire town meeting here to talk about the hypothetical of what might happen. We put the stop signs at uh, Woodland and Mill as a, as a test. We certainly can do the same thing with the school zone. I don't think it's good. It, you know, the town business has come to a screeching halt because of a 20 mile an hour zone. But then you can have the old, the meeting and people can be invited to come talk about their experience with it rather than the hypothetical what's going to happen, the traffic's going to back to Holliston. I think we on Woodland, I'm sorry, on Woodland, we, we posted it a week before, didn't we, with the message boards? Yeah, we had the message Well, just judging from the phone calls I got from a simple stop sign. Okay. Or, <laughs> Just so that I can go to the post office in peace, I would like to have. A, <laughs> well, I like the idea of the truck. But kind of frankly, thing. that person wouldn't have shown up for the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> but the five we got, so you're one, were in support of it. Well, I like the, the idea of a trial period that's well advertised uh, in advance of this public hearing so we have some good yeah, data, that, you know, that makes good sense. experience with it. Actually, trying it out. Yeah, I, I like the trial period too. If, if I had to vote today, I'd vote no because of that outlier. Site, I'd be in favor of a zone that's narrowly yeah, addressed at the at school driveway itself. But would you be okay with trying it out? Yeah, of course. As, as, as structured I mean, here, it, it never hurts to public, see yeah. how it works. Yeah. So, uh, I think that would be great. How's well, that? it would probably have to be a a few months of trial because, frankly, um, we're not using it as a speed trap. Just to be clear. We already I already discussed this with my personnel that you know, we're going to get out there and educate people about what's going on. We're certainly not going to pull people over and give them uh, tickets. It's it's something very new to the town. Um, so I, I guess my point is um, if we've got what two months left of school. Um, I don't know if two months is going to be long enough to to get you know some decent data. Well, I think it'll give people plenty of time. Might get some reactions, yeah, exactly. but okay. Mo most importantly, you might get reactions from parents at Pine Hill School too, because I'm sure they'll have a lot to say one way or the other. Yeah. yeah. It may, may not all be positive. Right. Could be negative. All right. Well, I'm willing. To, I'm willing to do a, a trial on this and then have a, a public hearing. <coughs> but we still have to fix the defect. That here that it doesn't work. So we, we yeah. So we can do that in the putting a sign. So you're looking phase. for an additional sign on both sides. Yes. 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 In either direction. Yes. 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 Um, I know the drive. It's, it's not posted. posted. Wouldn't you want to post that first before you worry about posting uh, uh, numbered routes? <laughs> well, that's where you're going to get kids and where you're going to get yeah, parents it, rushing to get their kids <coughs> off. We've never had a problem, Mike, with, with parents. Well, it's not. The it's the one road. problem that might happen, Rick. You've got to really plan ahead for these things. You've taught me that. I, I understand that, but, but we, we haven't had school zone signs since I've been the chief in this town. Um, so, and, and, and frankly, the five years I've, I've been here, I, I go up and down Pine Hill pretty much every morning, and, and the, the parents are very um, cautious when they go up there. But they technically are. speaking, just like Butler Street's a flaw, I mean, I think that's a great point. We've got a flaw on that. That is a, uh, that's a road. You could pull me over for speeding on that road, even though it's not posted. It's a private way. It will be posted. There's a private way? Yeah, it's not a public It'll be inside the school zone. It'll be posted. So, so we should put a sign. Well, it, the public has a right of so. access. Right, but, so. it's, but it's never, I, I don't think it's ever gone through town meeting and been accepted as a public. It's part of the school driveway. Yeah, I'd have to look into that. Do you have that a, any comment on that, Brad, over the 20 years you said on no, traffic seats? Okay. <laughs> I, I, I think that's a, that's a Gino question. Yeah. Yeah, okay. We'll get an answer from Gino. All right, good. So we don't need to vote on this. this uh, I think he's got. Marching orders, well enough, right? Unless you want to vote, you like voting. Well, yeah. If okay. you don't take a vote, nothing. There happens. you go. I'm looking for the legal mind here. But I mean, is something going to happen? 
So we're going to do a trial basis. So I guess we'll t do a motion for a trial basis as uh, outlined here, plus addressing the Butler Street flaw and evaluating how to deal with the potential flaw of the Pine Hill driveway on a trial basis of at least two months. And then we'll come back for a public hearing. Second. So, okay, so that's my motion. It's seconded. Uh, just but just to build on your, on your point, the, the signs are pretty cheap. They're what? Less than $100 each. No, 300 bucks. Um, the, this total setup, I think, ran in the neighborhood of 130. Oh, for each. four signs. For one. For one uh, sign. For each sign. For each sign, 130. I'm I, I'm thinking to build on what Peter's point was. To post two signs more on Pine Hill. Pine Hill. Right. 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 I, I, I just think that into the zone. right the, the, the school zone, zone is gonna is gonna cr create that, that. that encompasses that. Oh, it's built in. It's that already umbrella. right. And I'm, I'm pretty sure the Pine Hill Access Road is a private private driveway. So I don't believe we have that for uh, slated for any sort of paving or town work that comes under the school system. Did we suggest it to the superintendent? Yeah, I, I mean, it, it can't hurt. That, that signage can't hurt anyway. Just because it's not the parents I'm worried about. It's always somebody, you know, a Federal Express driver who's in a hurry, or something like that. May, may not even know that he's delivering a package to a school. Yeah. To have a sign that says "Children Ahead." Or and if we confirm these hours with the superintendent, like these are the ideal. Yes. Yeah. That's the usual sign. Rick, yes. Is there a sign, a speed limit sign on Pine Hill Drive right now, right at the bottom of the road? So it's 130. I think there might be a, one of those uh, cautionary signs, though. Children or yeah. Yeah, that was my question. I, I just don't know if there's something there already. I don't think there's any sign. So, so if <laughs> it can only be cautionary, anyway. All right. So right, but what's wrong with putting a sign on children ahead? I think there actually is. I think there is a sign like that, but there's definitely not a speed limit sign. All right, well, we one more. Yeah, like for the speed zone on Pine Hill Lane, all the school buses will be late. <laughs> well, you've, you've said something there because some of the biggest speeding violators, at least on the back roads in the morning, are the school buses. Yeah. 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 Not when you're behind one. All right, well, so we... Well, they stop. <laughs> we, we moved and seconded and uh, discussed. Moved and seconded to, to try this on an experimental basis, to bring it back for a full hearing before the board after the experiment, to add an additional sign on, on uh, Butler Street announcing that you're approaching a school zone. traffic zone. And I wish there was some... I'd like to add in here that some sign on the Pine Hill Lane indicating that there's a school or yeah, children. Yeah, or we had. Yeah. So we're just re regurgitating, re re rephrasing the uh, motion. Well, you think that's funny, Diane, huh? All right, well, so uh, all in favor. Great. Donna, you have something to say? Over there? No, oh, I'm sorry. All right, stop laughing at me. <laughs> All right, Ed, so you get to stay there. Yes, I do. All right. Thanks, Chief. I sat in, well, I'll get to that later. What, what was that I sat in on, Chief? What's that? Briefly today, what, what did I sit in on? What do you call that? Yeah. Improvised explosive device awareness training. There you go. All right. Here. I need to know when there's one <coughs> at the selectors table. So uh, yeah. Yeah. Let me just go to the grocery store and I'll get the ingredients. <laughs> I learned. All right, so Ed, um, you're all by your lonesome up there. Okay, so we can take it in any particular order here. We have preview of chapter 90 and sidewalk work, so we'll just go in that order. How's that? That works for me. Um, you, we've got some additional things in the file here. Okay, so so we have a memo, Ed, that you wrote on Chapter 90 Road Work. You've outlined your priorities. You gave a separate memo with all of the priorities. 
um, and why your second priority you are suggesting holding off on. You've estimated some amounts. You've based it on amounts that you estimated was coming or was to come from the state, but now we find a sheet of paper that the state sent that's a hundred and that did come after thirty grand less than what you thought. Came after you spoke to somebody. So, so I'm just leading you in. So if you could just walk us through however you want to walk us through this. All right. Um, this. Can I see? Um, yeah. Well, we currently have slated from uh, last year's work that was not completed was North Main Street, and that'll be taking place this spring. Uh, we also have a culvert down at Goulding Street East that we are going to be taking care of. Yep. And that's pretty expensive. Yes. Where's that culvert? That's the one right past the Just tracks. past the railroad tracks. Okay. Uh, it's a double 36-inch pipe, and we're going to be replacing that with a concrete uh, box okay. structure, open channel. Um, it's something that conservation uh, would like to see installed as a uh, standard practice. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that I have absolutely no problem installing. Uh, it's just that the cost, but it is better, more permanent, better for the environment. Okay. That's the way to go. For this year, I'm recommending uh, crack ceiling for 30000 in various roadways. And you've identified those farm, Washington Mill Lake. Farm, Washington Mill Lake, yeah. and there'll be a few other miscellaneous ones in yeah. there. Um, the other project um, is Woodland Street, and that would encompass the grinding and repaving <coughs> of woodland between Mill and Washington so Street. So this is north of Mill. Last year you did, or a year before, you did south of Mill on Woodland, right? South then, Main. Yes, South Main. Now you're going to Washington Street. And there, I, there's another culvert with a big dip in it, right? Are they, yeah, that's that's. Is a, this repairing that? that it will, it'll it'll fix the divot. Um, the pipe is relatively new. Uh, we had a little bit of uh, settling there at the pipe, and it's also a known just a frost heave area. Uh, with the amount of water that that from the swamp area, it does get water. So on the, the 195 water. grand you've identified will take care of that. Problem. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Plus the numbers. Pay. Mine doesn't have numbers. Uh, maybe you're not looking at the right memo. I can't find that sheet. I have a later memo, but it's a different. I have memo. a later memo, which is priority listing, but I have a chapter 90, yeah. 2014. I wish I had that memo. Which I don't, I don't have that. Which is the key to the whole story here. I just sent uh, Diane to make some more. Okay. That's we don't rate, Paul. We're not able to get the memo. But that was no, that was attached. Oh, here it is. It's, it's attached. attached it's pack. attached to what? Oh, uh, the big packet. Uh, uh, that packet right there, right there. Go way to the end. The last two pages. That one. This one? No. This one. Okay. Attached to this. Okay. All right. Good. Yep. That's it. We, we saved pages. on staples. This is good. <laughs> yeah, I ripped mine apart. That's what I think they were stable. Let me say a couple of things about these recommendations. First, the, the governor's issued a letter dated April 1, who's, and he's releasing only $200 million. But in fact, we have an appropriation that's passed both houses, which, if vetoed, will be overridden for $300 million, which is $100 million more than he's releasing. And we similarly, this for this year, we had an appropriation for $300 million, and he only released $200 million. And we're trying to put pressure on him to release the remaining $1 million, $100 million, before the end of this fiscal year as an additional amount. This letter talks about next year, and he's releasing $200 million, which is two-thirds of the, the funds that the legislature has made available for this, this work. So there may be there may be an additional two hundred million or two hundred and fifty thousand coming to Sherburne, one hundred million for this fiscal year and one hundred million for next fiscal year that the governor hasn't released yet. So I wasn't aware that he was gonna do this same thing he did last year again. He didn't consult with you, Paul. Yeah. Yeah, he should have. He should have. I, I wasn't either. I was actually in the Chapter 90 office on Monday, and the girl there indicated to me that we were going to receive the same amount that we did last year with a possibility of an additional 10%. So I was quite shocked when uh, Peter gave me the uh, memo the letter, there from the state yeah. with a lower amount. 
Yeah. So you're so just. We're going to work on fixing that. So but that was. I, I had a couple other things, but go ahead. Well, no, no just, to, just to do the math, Ed, so I understand what's available is you have 90,000, 89,655, 90,000 left over from last year based on what you've already committed, right? Yes. So there's 90 there, and you were anticipating another 380, but now we see that it's actually 250 to 254,000 to count on, right? Yes. So that leaves us 345,000 or thereabouts available to spend in this fiscal year uh, unless the state ponies up some more, and that's some more amount would be 130,000, yeah. 125,000 in this fiscal year. And I, I still like to leave a, uh, a good yeah. solid 75 in that account for emergencies, culverts, roadway repairs. Oh, okay, um, so you never know what'll so pop for, up. So with 340 grand known available, roughly, right? You've got roughly 290,000 of projects identified here in, uh, in these. Uh, whatever you've got here, uh, the, the four, four projects, yes. which don't include any sidewalks, no, and don't include uh, the other point that I we uh, mentioned. The uh, we had talked about last year, sort of adding it as your fourth element of items to consider in the chap spending chapter 90 funds on, which is the roadsides to strengthen them up or curb them to the extent they can be curbed for bicycle and other foot traffic because those roadway roadsides tend to crumble a lot yep. as we see. So, and I, and I know you have culvert issues or drainage issues to deal with, but to the extent that the edges of the roads can be fixed without doing the full-blown smash, uh, I'm hoping we can find a way to do that and allocate some of the funds for that. Because, you know, a number of folks have mentioned, oh, geez, I ride my bike, but all of a sudden it hit the busted edges of the road and it gets dangerous, you know? Yes. If I, if I could, can I go back to my list here? I wanted to make a comment about Maple Street because it's Maple Street's turn to have some work done. Yeah. And the recommendation is not to do that work because of the issues before the town regarding <coughs> development on Maple Street and how that would inter interact with the paving of Maple Street. And there is a logic to that, to see how that plays out, because we certainly don't want to spend the money on paving the road and then find out that something has to be dug <coughs> up or whatever. But I, so I can go along with that, with the caveat that Maple Street needs the work, and a number of residents have talked to me about, about getting that street fixed. So I want to be sure that it remains high on the priority list. And so whatever happens with the, the Maple Street development, that's going to play out over the next year or so. Hopefully you will come back at some point to be able to address that street. That was, a, that was my exact thought. Um, I actually had Maple Street slated for this year and decided uh, that I would recommend to the board to hold off and uh, let me do a Woodland Street and I'll do my best effort to get out there, grind, make a, a ton of pothole repairs uh, as best we can and let that play out because um, even if we can get some money for the paving, that's great. But even if they still put the project in and run the truck traffic over it, we're still better off waiting to pave it until they're completed. <coughs> yeah. and, and my last point was to do my, my annual plea for the 25,000 for sidewalks. sidewalks. We have um, a well thought out program adopted by prior boards to spend 25,000 a year at the discretion of the, the uh, Seaman D director on maintaining the sidewalks that we have. And last year <coughs> we didn't spend anything because the board did not agree on spending that money. But I was in favor of it last year. I'm in favor of it this year. We should let that program go forward. I would point out that uh, when that program was established, we had less Chapter 90 funds. It's been increased by more than 25000 so it's certainly all funded with new money that hasn't been, uh, ha wasn't in the, the uh, pot before. The assets of the town <coughs> include sidewalks, 
if we are care about sidewalks, we need to maintain them. If you don't maintain them, they deteriorate and they go away. And I understand the argument that, well, gee, you look at any one particular sidewalk, well, that particular sidewalk isn't, isn't in the center of town and it's not used by hundreds or thousands of people. But if you step back from 10,000 feet looking down, if you do nothing on sidewalks year after year because each one individually isn't a central sidewalk, we are losing those sidewalks to, to deterioration. We should, we are getting the money for this purpose. We ought to spend the money for this purpose. And so I would urge the board let the CMD director do his job. Let him spend the 25000 this year on maintaining a sidewalk or whatever sidewalks he, he feels needs to be done. And let's continue that program every year so that 25000 gets spent. How, how much does 25000 get you in terms of sidewalk feet, if that's the way to do it? Now, and knowing that based on these projects, outlining the four projects, there's 50 grand remaining in Chapter 90 funds, assuming the state doesn't put any more forth. We calculated out last year to be about 1,500 feet to 2,000 feet for 25 grand. Yes. And so then, if you go through your priority list or the, your, the sidewalk data, I take it the one is the worst, if it's a one, it's the worst condition. Oh, I so, read the other way around, the five was yeah. the worst condition. Well, only because I see it on his, his list, so. Uh, so, Thoroughbred Drive is a one, and that's on your list. Old Field is a two to one, so that's, that's two to one. Um, and I think, and Fawn Road is one to two. And, and one of the reasons why I asked for the map is because I don't know that I know where all these roads are. <laughs> How many people walk should them? Get out more, Peter. I should get out more. Yeah, there you go. So Bogostow Brook you have is a three to two on what you recommended last year's possibility. Yes. And Bridal Path is a two to four. So sounds like the. Thoroughbred's the worst, and that would eat up at least half or two thirds of the 25 grand if you were to do that. And that's down where? Parks Drive, or is that? Uh, that's down near the Ivy. Oh, that's an Ivy. So that's where there's a million kids walking around, and uh, yes, yeah. So, so, so I'm I, curious how. And now I'm going to sit back. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I want to talk about roads first before we talk about sidewalks, and and so I had a question about Goulding because I didn't. Way I understand something, which is uh, you're planning to pave from South Main to the railroad tracks now, and then uh, this is really loud at a later time to pave from Lake down to the tracks. Yes. And I had thought the Lake down to the tracks part was just done maybe three years ago, four years ago, fairly recent. Um, is, has something happened to deteriorate it, or was it not? No, we did. We did Forest Street, and we took care of the triangle while we were there. And um, so we'll be paving from Lake Intersection, Lake Street Intersection, down to the railroad tracks. But that was smoothed off within the past few years. I'm quite sure of it. I don't know um, when exactly. Maybe it's, it's, it's definitely in better. It's definitely in better shape than the other half. Yeah. Um, sure. And the reason being is I wanted, Chip seal. To, I, wanted to Chip seal. Yeah. I wanted to install that culvert that is going to settle. I'm going to have to come back and readdress right. it. So no, that makes sense. I just I was just curious. So if it's chip sealed. It still needs to be resurfaced, is that what you're saying? The chip seal is basically like um, you doing your driveway, putting a seal coat on it, it fills up all the cracks, keeps the water right. out. Well, it went from being terrible to being pretty good. Yes. Um, and, and so that's why, that's why I was just curious how long that's supposed to last. And the chip seal will last depending on the truck traffic or what you get through there, but you can typically get another four years out of the roadway when you chip seal it. Okay. Um, a while back, Maple Street was chip sealed. That roadway should have never been chip sealed. Right. Uh, the traffic speed is too high for that and the chip seal. It just creates a real noisy. Uh, chip seals work good in uh, neighborhoods like Thoroughbred, Ivy, Oldfield. 
Um, most of the residents don't like them because they are, uh, they're not smooth for roller, blade, roller skating. Um, but it is a, a low cost way for me to maintain and extend the life of the roadway. Right, okay, well, that makes sense. And now, now I'll talk about sidewalks, which is... Um, no, I will sit back. Yeah, yeah sit back. I, I, I would be completely in favor of spending the sidewalk money on North Main Street sidewalk if it needs to be improved on the little stretch of sidewalk that we're trying to get in, in the Abbey Road project. I would be against spending town money to pave sidewalks in subdivisions where the sidewalks aren't used. And I think we had a discussion last year with a resident of Oldfield who said they've never seen anybody walk on the Oldfield sidewalk. Um, I can't speak to Fawn Road or Thoroughbred, but I think before we spend money on these sidewalks, we need to know that they're actually used. And if they're not used, we should let them go back to lawn or whatever they go back to and, and um, discontinue them, which I, I think we can do. Um, but in any case, I'd rather have the money around when it came time to do the sidewalk on North Main Street or South Main Street than fritter it on a subdivision project. And I, and I agree. I, I see both sides. And um, I'm uh, very cautious to offer uh, up. It's really the board's decision on, on behalf of the residents. It's my job to tell you what needs to be repaired. Um, <clears throat> and you do make a good point there, uh, Mike. Um, if you were going to eliminate certain sidewalks, um, I would recommend that you would look at like Russet Hill, a sidewalk that doesn't go anywhere. It's such a short span, it doesn't even do all of Russet Hill. Uh, Bogostow Brook, it doesn't go and connect the whole neighborhood. Um, Oldfield does connect the whole neighborhood, but again, that's a decision that uh, the board has to make. If you were to add sidewalks elsewhere in town, can you spend this money to add a sidewalk or Absolutely. extend a sidewalk? Absolutely. And where would you do that? If you, forgetting repairing some of these outliers, um, where, <coughs> are there places that we, uh, that we can uh, I, repair, I, if, as Mike's talking, or extend, expand, lengthen? I would, um, I would like to see the sidewalks at the red light addressed. Um, there, there's a huge safety issue there with uh, the pedestrians being able to extend over to the crossing. That light needs to be redone. Um, and I would actually like to see both sides of North Main taken care of. I, mean, I think you get enough pedestrian traffic down through that area that I think it would be money well spent. Or a while back, Paul had a great idea of um, doing a pathway in behind and somehow connecting into the uh, back of uh, Ward Park, Ward Park? Um, by the playset and getting people downtown that way through a, a pathway. That's a great idea. Um, I think you'd, that's a, it's a good bang for your buck. Well, that would be money well spent and consistent with Mike's talking about. I'd be about, very in favor of that, yeah. And, and I think consistent with Paul's objectives, uh, although he doesn't sound like Paul, I'm not, I don't want to speak for you, Paul. But the idea of letting some of these go to seed or back to... Well, the one thing I would caution on, though, is when you, when you... When I took a good look at putting a sidewalk down that stretch of uh, North Main from the Peace Abbey down towards the fire station, um, what I, the first thing that jumped out at me is I think the roadway really needs to be addressed there because the roadway width narrowed, it widened, it narrowed, and you just didn't have a straight shot down through there. We do have drainage in place. Um, I would love to see a comprehensive project there that would involve some granite curbing. Let's uh, really shore up and get a good solid sidewalk in down through there. Chief of Police, yes, sir. I, I just think, see, this is, this is communication, traffic safety right. to the chief. We were just talking about South Street. Okay. Well, I mean, you, that would be a better place to spend sidewalk money than No, not sidewalk money, paving. Paving, absolutely. Oh. So in lieu of sidewalk, you'd rather see paper. Well, the only, the only problem with that, Rick, is you got to convince Natick to do the same thing on their end. Otherwise, you have no benefit from paving our we'll side. We'll get it done for you. Yeah. Actually, we conveyed that to Yes, sir. You're touching on something we've had a lot of conversations about in traffic safety. And i, I got a full disclosure, I'm going to butter. Those kids that walk off of Butler Street understand cannot, there's no safe way for them to get to the school. They're the closest kids to the school and they can't get there. There isn't a legal crosswalk and there's definitely not a legal light button because it's not, you can't even get there. A kid, I guess, could. No one in a wheelchair can even activate the lights to get across at our school. 
is this money that you have available for that kind of project too, or does it have to be spent on roads and sidewalks? No, the estimate that we had obtained for uh, redoing the red light, the light system um, was in the neighborhood of, I think it was 140, and that was without adding sidewalk work in. That was with CMD pouring concrete pads for the uh, control box and us putting in as much. That was for replacing the light and restructuring the configuration of it. Is that right? That's but, but he mentioned that that didn't include the sidewalk. So I'm just saying, if we're talking sidewalks, that's yeah. something. Yeah. Sure, I'm not it's saying I'm not trying to sell you a light right now, but well, I'm saying okay. the sidewalk. I'd buy a light there if it's a safety issue. But um, <coughs> you know, a button, for, <coughs> a button for the light on that side of the street and a sidewalk. Does that get you? What needs to happen, or does it have to be? Well, I think there's some the light. We, that's we don't have the um, trip system or the warning system capability on the other side to add the pedestrian cross. Uh, and what we'd like to do is get a uh, full, true pedestrian crossing there, a vehicle trip system installed, the wires that are antiquated. Um, and I had brought this up this year just because looking at the age of the system, um, Murphy's Law says as soon as you look at it and realize what you have there, it's going to fail. Um, it is a very old system. I mean, I'd, I'd love to see the sidewalk money put into a, you know, pattern where you can use that over a period of years and fix those kinds of places. Yeah. The problem is, twenty-five grand is not going to get you very far down uh, North Main. It'll certainly help out, but um, well, you have. I, think, I mean, if the math is right, you got about fifty to play with, which leaves you no cushion unless the state comes forward. Yeah. So, and, and you mentioned right at the beginning, you like to have a. Carryover, I'd like to have a carryover, and I mean, also, so, too, in all, all honesty, I mean, we've got over 65 miles of roadway, and my only funding for paving is Chapter 90, so I'd like to keep as yeah. much of that money for so, paving as possible. So, if you, if you, when you were doing this and you presented these four projects to us for the paving, you were <coughs> thinking that you had 130 grand more, knowing that you don't have that, or at least it isn't a sure thing, would you have come up with a different recommendation? They all need to get done, and uh, I'd like to get done as much as possible. And then, um, okay, so those stay. So that still leaves you 50 w with no cushion, except the possibility of the state coming forward with one. And and there's none of this contemplates that other thing, the side of the road stuff that I'm talking about, which maybe you can't do or you can do. I I have no clue. In order to run down North Main, you're going to be looking at some um, easements, and it's going to have to be surveyed. And um, I believe, I think a portion of the Peace Abbey wall needed to be pushed back, unless we could get a. Uh, no, 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 that's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about the the, the fourth element of Chapter 90 spending that I keep wanting oh, yes. to add to this list. We'll, we'll be picking away at areas of that, and, and that's something I think we can do in house. In house, I want to mention that we have. Pending in the legislature, <coughs> appropriations earmark for a million dollars for the sidewalk on North yeah. Main Street and 3.4 million for drainage improvements. And now that I've done some research into that, some of those drainage improvements would lead to, or could lead to curbing. So this over four million dollars that is going to be sitting out there that will come to us that are running about three years behind on this bond authorization. <coughs> so that would be, that will get passed in 14, so in the 2016-2017 period. There will be the money to do the sidewalk on, on North Main Street on the east side. Part of the process though, and we're, we're using the time we're using the time well because we're not in a position to spend the money on North Main Street yet. That, we're working with the Peace Abbey to get a, the frontage along there, an easement. They're going to be doing a deed swap. We've had that discussion when they were here. We're going to get an easement for the other piece. Some engineering work has to be done. All, all those pieces need to, need to come into play. We need to we actually need to have the right of way before you throw the pavement down. and, and start tearing into people's property. So we're using the time well, and in the meantime, the, the money is working its way in the pipeline. You know, it's got to start at one end of the pipeline before it comes out the other end. And it's about a three-year process before it'll come up. But then we'll have a significant chunk of money. 
which will hopefully fall into place after we get up the right of way and whatever engineering has to be done. And then we build the sidewalk on North Main Street. The Butler Street stuff is not, we don't have any earmark money for. And as I said earlier, I'm 100% in favor of doing sidewalks, not just maintaining our existing sidewalks. I, I don't agree with letting them go to patch. I think we should have sidewalks throughout the town, make this town much more pedestrian friendly. But I'm also in favor of, of uh, letting kids walk to school. And so I would be in favor of whatever sidewalk improvements could be made in the Butler Street area, in the uh, um, Elliott Street area, and at the traffic light that would facilitate the safety of children. So we still need to set aside 25 grand a year for sidewalks, whether we use it there or we use it elsewhere. <coughs> the reality is that we have not spent any money on sidewalks in a very long time. We need to keep at it. So how, how, how about this, um, that we, 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 we vote to approve these four items that Ed has, which eats up a big slug of the money known to be available. And then Ed and David work out coming back to us, because th this will keep you busy on doing Chapter 90 projects, right? And, and you come back to us with safety sidewalks or really identify the, the 25 grand of spending of sidewalks and or, and or more if, you, if it's necessary for other streets and so forth. And, and also identify some spending of the bicycle to safety of the side of the road thing. So just, just keep in mind, um, again, the Chapter 90 is the only funding I have for roadways. And um, when I go to tap on Maple Street, um, Maple Street, we're looking at... Yeah, where are you, how are you doing the potholes? Is that coming out of this money? That'll, or that'll come out of my roadway yeah. um, material budget. Is there but, a ton of uh, potholes on that road? Again, with, the, with the approximately 300, you know, call 300 on a yearly basis in order to, to take care of all of the roadways. It's, it's not a lot of money. Right. And in order for me and to... that's what Mr. Scully was talking about earlier. Maple Street, I have an estimated out, and this is without any curbing, without any drainage issues, 345000 So To repave. To repave. All right, but that's not what we're talking about, right? No, I'm just saying they have that money in, in the, going forward. Um, you've, um, oh, for when you want to do that, you're going to do that. that 350. You're going to eat up a full year's exactly, allocation exactly. if they allocate the larger amount. Basically. Oh, yeah. Well, here's the thing. That, again, this governor, because he feels not enough money has been given to transportation, has withheld 100 million for two years, <clears throat> and this unanimous opinion on the part of the general court that this money needs to be spent and spent immediately. And the governor's only got a year, less than a year, in office. Okay. That money is going to come to the town sooner or later. The question would add that that's 50% more money than we're getting. And now there's two years of money. It's already been appropriated. It's already there. It's in the bank, basically. It's just the governor has to... It's not in our bank. Yeah. It's not it's in our bank. But a governor has to release... And in, in, in that, that's, all, that's all welcomed. Um, but in order for to take care of you know the, the roadways that I have, um, we need more money. And um, like, like Rick said, you got South Street. I mean, I've got four or five streets you know, waiting in the wings that um, would really need the attention. And... Um, whether that's addressed through an article or, or a uh, separate line item for sidewalks or a, um, a, a supplemental for roadway work. Um, mm -hmm. I think we're going to be looking at that in the near future to take care of a few things. Well, oh, so how about we do these four and you come back with a really carefully thought through sidewalk attack, understanding the sensibilities of the two good looking guys at, at each of both sides of me here. Um, 
and the money available. So I move that we approve uh, crack ceiling of 30,000 Woodland Street, 194,972. Butler Street, 13,572, and Goulding Street East, 49,040. Any other discussion? All in favor? Uh, Elliot, we, we voted, sorry, but we'll take your comment. We voted all in favor. Okay, uh, I wonder if the uh, disabled persons in the Council on Aging would have any comment on not repaving sidewalks in remote sections of Sheridan. You're saying let them go to hell and uh, deteriorate. And I think that those sidewalks, the, the right, the uh, path of these sidewalks is already defined. They're there. And I think if you put a little bit of two inches of hot top over them, they'll be good for another 40 years. Excellent. And I think it should be done. I agree. Now. Ra ra ra. North Main Street, East Side. I've said it again and again and over and over and over. I am opposed to a sidewalk on the east side of North Main Street because everything on North Main Street where people will be going is on the west side. Except for both And they're going to call on you, Elliot. So, so. There's, there's, nothing, there's nothing on the east side, very little. So... Get a few more bed roses of uh, flashing uh, pedestrian lights and put along uh, North Main Street here and there where you think this is good. If you can't figure it out, I'll show it to you. And anyone that wants to walk across and come down and have to walk back across, so be it. Okay. But We're now spend all these all right, like millions of dollars and, uh, and put pedestrians on both sides of the, uh, the well, road. Ed's going to come back to us with uh, say, sidewalks. Forget east side and pay attention to the okay. west side. All right. And there aren't that many pedestrians anyway. Thank you, Elliot. Okay, Ed, spring cleanup day. Can spring I point out? Day. Last, yes. We had this discussion last August, um, and we said let's try to get this done before town meeting next time. So the timing of this makes more sense. Now, well, what we're doing, chapter nine? Oh, right, absolutely, because right, yeah. we're spring, the weather, all that's great. Yeah, yeah. 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 Part and, of and the problem for the delay was that the state screwed up with the yeah. release of the chapter ninety funds. It wasn't the, you know, was that the what town it administrator who held that stuff back, or that Ed had held that stuff back. We didn't yeah. get yep. our final numbers from the state until late last year. We got it earlier this year, so that falls into into uh, uh, the timing to do good planning. Yeah. Okay. But last year, it wasn't a local problem. Yeah. No, this is all. Oh, yeah, okay. This is all great. I think we're in a good okay. spot here because you. And can the year move before that, forward. they gave us yeah. the notice, but then they didn't release the funds until August. And, and we just found out we got 130 grand less than we thought, <laughs> <laughs> which is a bit of a disappointment. <coughs> but uh, it's coming. Then. <laughs> so we have a spring cleanup day. I was uh, requested to put together a cleanup day. And um, in, in speaking with um, various people, uh, we decided on May 3rd it would fall after when the kids come back to school. And uh, what we're planning on is um, I've got Bridget, I've got uh, Pat Cassell, and uh, we're going to be putting together group teams of uh, in different areas, and uh, we'll be doing a number of different projects. And you have Jeannie Guthrie, am I reading this right? Or I, yep. didn't, I didn't see Bridget, I saw Jeannie. Uh, Bridget's in there, um, she's not in there um, okay. on the list, but she's gonna be putting together a team. She sent out Good. an email to um, a number of different uh, people she had on her conservation list, and she's gonna be putting together a project list down at Barbara Reservation. Uh, Pat and Jeannie are gonna be putting together a number of different projects at Farm Pond. CMD is going to help with support. We're going to make bags available at Town Hall and also at CMD for residents who want to just take care of in front of their houses and then uh, leave the bags out for us and we'll grab them. And how are we planning to publicize this? We're going to be throwing it in the newspaper. It'll be on the website. And um, in the newspaper. Good. There's a little typo there. Yeah, you got that? <coughs> There's a typo. Second line, in invited. <laughs> Where? I'm sorry. Ages are in invited. Ages are. 45 yeah. minutes. Okay. Of 
Good. 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 All right, May 3rd, here we go. Excellent. Spring cleanup day. Um, you have CMD proposed fees. What are we going to This, this can just here. be a quick, quick thing. Um, Ed and I had talked a while back that if we look at fees again, that we, this is a fee that we should consider. So you want to give just a, a quick heads up on that, and then I'm going to distribute to them what um, we received. I think this was town. Currently, we have no fee for um, utilities performing any uh, road work. Uh, so we proposed a, um, a street opening fee of $150 in uh, surveying all surrounding towns. Everybody has a some sort of fee. Who pays that fee? Um, whoever is pulling the permit. NSTAR. Okay. So when utilities are doing work, they, they pay a fee. Gotcha. In uh, surveying all the surrounding towns, uh, 150 seem to be about the average street opening fee. Can I, it, can it, I suggest a, a little bit of a change to that? If NSTAR is going to do a street opening from Framingham to Holliston, for example, down Western Avenue, letting them do it for 150 bucks is ridiculously low. It should be $150 for X amount of feet and then an additional for And then thereafter, it kicks in again. So 10, 20 feet, maybe 150 bucks. But 10 miles, that should be... Absolutely. Well, I think we talked about as just a, a standard street opening is, would be one hole, and then there'd be a, like a trench excavation would, permit would be something different that would be along that line. What, what some places do also, Ed, you're probably familiar with this, is they don't allow street openings within a certain amount of time after work's been done on a road so that it's not dug up and, and damaged. You put a moratorium on, uh, yes, for freshly paved roads, um, and also you don't allow the street openings to occur uh, before April 15th. And so do we, do we have those policies? We would incorporate it into this. Okay. Well, but I mean, that, that example, take Western Ave. That was repaved, and then all of a sudden it's opened up, and now it's a lousy surface. What, what remedy do we have to get it surfaced better? That should be part of this. I mean, maybe beyond fee, it's what, what what some municipalities do is if if that happens, you have to repave from curb to curb. You can't just repave the strip that you trenched. Yep. Some of my towns have adopted bylaws. They found that <coughs> simply having the DPW chief, or in our case, the CMD guy, have a policy doesn't really have the teeth. You have a bylaw that says for five years you can't adopt it. You, you can't dig up a street unless That you one's tough to enforce. Yeah. Um, but in a case of example is a Gunkwin gas. They went across Washington down on the Holliston line. Uh, that settled after uh, about a year, a little over a year. Um, <clears throat> I required them to come back and pave it, and they did. I mean, if this is a bylaw, we should maybe be thinking about for a year from now. Right. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna. Dis uh, I will distribute some material to you that um, is from town council, and then um, maybe we can look at. Um, so we do two talking things: about policy it when we talk about and fees. And Tina, uh, fees, policy, and teen up for bylaw changes for yeah. next town meeting. Yeah, that yeah. would be good. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. That's great thinking of that stuff. Um, all right. So we also had Ed uh, your capital budget request. And uh, we'll bundle that with fleet management. Uh, the memo that you provided us was very helpful to me. I got a better understanding. And plus, you updated this equipment schedule, it looks like, or brought it current. And uh, had I, I think if, had I known this earlier, I might have probed even deeper on the JD loader for this year's capital budget request. Um, so that's why this sort of thing is very useful. Well, one of the things that I, I, um, I want to comment on is sort of the eye-opener here that there's more equipment than you actually need and that you were talking about um, surplusing some equipment. Yes. That, uh, <coughs> that makes a lot of sense. We've what, I, what I've tried to do is um, 
um, consolidate exactly what we're not using and um, utilize, there's a, there's a lot of new equipment on the market. Uh, for example, the new Wacker that we picked up, it's a multi-purpose vehicle. We can sweep a uh, gutter line, sweep a sidewalk, plow a, uh, plow a sidewalk, snow blow a sidewalk, and then also use it for roadside trimming. Um, so we're, um, it's going to be need to be replaced faster uh, because we're using it more, but we are using it throughout the year. And the same thing applies with the uh, dump trucks, like I said, down the road. If we end up looking at um, swapping the containers out at the recycle center, we may be able to haul those at a cheaper rate. It's just you have a list here of like 20 pieces of equipment. I mean, I didn't count them up, but 20 people. You need 20 people to operate 20 pieces of equipment if you're going to use them all at the same time. So if you've got... We're, we're a multifunction, multifaceted... Um, yeah, I mean, I read thoroughly his descriptions of how these are used, and I found it very helpful in, in just following a little bit further on what Paul was saying. What I liked to see was where you were saying, we're going we're gonna, to, you're recommending that this, take for instance the basin cleaner, that you subcontract that because it's a more cost effective approach. Or the compressor, you'll just rent it, and it's more, com more uh, cost effective than trying to replace it, uh, even though it's a. 25, 30 year old, 40 year old piece of equipment. Um, yeah, in the case of the compressor, I wasn't hot to trot on replacing that because, you know, again, the thing yeah. just won't die. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> so, so but, what? Um, in yeah. the case it does die tomorrow, I can go down the street and rent one. I can borrow one from Natick, and uh, they're readily available used at a much cheaper. Yeah. So, th this helped further convince me of the need for the dump truck because you, you the, the snow plow dump truck that, that that we haven't voted on, so I'm going to ask for a vote tonight. But you made a good case for it there. Yeah, so I'm fully convinced on that, um, and this really helped that. So uh, I, I'd take a motion of support, if uh, I think is how we were doing it for the... So moved. And I'll second that. Any all in favor? Great. So we... Well, but just so that we can explain to our viewers why we suddenly are enthusiastic about this, can you take a minute and just tell us the justification you put in here that we, we've read. But our, our, our taxpayers don't know why they should spend their money <clears throat> on that. Uh, what I wrote in my memo was uh, we have um, five of the larger snow fighters, and it's a combination snow fighter dump truck. And they're utilized, from, they're utilized for snow, paving, and material hauling operations. These trucks are equipped with five to six yard combination sander slash dump bodies and are the core of our plowing and sanding operations. The taller, heavier plows scrape snow and ice off the roadway much better and they throw snow higher off of the roadway during heavy snowfall. We rotate their usage during the off snow season in order to extend their longevity. Why do we need five trucks of this caliber? In my opinion, this is the minimum, minimum in order to ensure coverage for Sherborne's 65 plus miles of roadway. In the past five years, Sherborne has actively attempted to recruit contracted trucks of this caliber unsuccessfully. Although our plow rates are competitive, these larger contracted trucks tend to lock up with state DOT operations. I also have reservations relying too much on snow contractors. <coughs> it is inherent that under these extreme conditions that this equipment can and will fail. It's been my experience that when the, their equipment fails, they will pack up and head home, leaving Sherborne without root coverage. Root coverage. I'd be comfortable with this memo going up on the website as uh, you know, people understand how their equipment's being used. Well, I particularly like the idea that uh, while we're asking the voters to spend money for the stump truck, you've agreed with the notion that there's more equipment than you need. You can surplus some equipment out or not replace some equipment. The analogy that, that I spoke of last time we talked about this was that if you, if you have a a fleet of airplanes that you need to fly, let's say 100 airplanes, but you only have five pilots, it, it doesn't matter whether you buy 110, 120 planes, you still have only five pilots. So all that equipment is, a t is an expense because you have to maintain it, you've got to repair it, you've got to store it somewhere, you've got to take care of it. But if you're still down to five pilots, why replace things? And so the notion that you can, you, you can surplus things, you can rent things, 
you can f you can contract out for some of this this equipment. That's all very exciting. The, the, the contract now is something uh, I always uh, I'm, I've always keep in a uh, lookout for. And an example is last year, uh, rolling the dice and going out with a uh, grass cutting contractor. And um, in my opinion, it's, it's going to work. It's going to work well. We got a few kinks that we've worked out as far as timing and cutting. Um, but all in all, I think it's saving Sherborne money. Good. Okay. Good. So the, the only other thing I'll say, and, and, and I'm going to ask David to do, do me a favor here. I, I had gotten this property, remember, I don't know, back last summer or something, we were looking at the insurance contract, and they listed out all the stuff, and mm -hmm. there was a question they used replacement cost or actual cash value or whatever. So anyway, I knew I had that in a folder, and I pulled it out, and I tried to reconcile it to this guy and I, I couldn't fully do it it looks like there might be some things we don't have and vice versa so and it may just be that I don't understand the right descriptions but that's worth right. double checking so yeah I'll check the one that you have and then and check and it see how that. this is make sure we we're not insuring stuff we don't have and insuring the stuff we yeah do. we've got a few trailers and things that like that that aren't on that list um, but yeah we regularly go through that list okay I just uh, just a simple Thing to be um, sure. Our roller isn't on the capital replacement list. Um, tampers, other tools. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, this this has trucks that a Ford cab chassis, 1987. I don't know which one that is on this list. Yeah, that, that sort of thing. That's good. Any other thoughts for Ed here? Really appreciate it. Thank you. One one thing that um, I, I don't think we'd ever taken a vote on the, the fuel accounting software. I think we did. Yes, we did. You did? Yeah. You remember how it, long We ago? were all in support of that. Yep. You remember, do you think it was this Saturday that advisory went through them? Let's, let's redo it. Yeah, I'm in support. Yeah, I'll ask I motion. Only decided. because I've been recording the dates. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Yeah. We, we, yeah, we, I think we did it. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Good, thanks a lot. Oh, I had two questions out back. Uh, Brad, I saw your arm up, and I'm sorry. I've just, John? Before Ed gets up, Ed's predecessor was telling us we needed a loader when he left. We didn't buy a loader. We didn't buy a loader. We didn't buy a loader. Now we're repairing a loader. Now you just fixed it, and it's not worth any more than it was last week. And the tranny's still questionable how long it'll last. What are you going to do? What are you doing? You <coughs> fixed it. You're going to replace it. Not this year. I mean, I. It's I, a lot I, scarier than one truck. You got a bunch of trucks. You only got one loader. I would. I would like to replace the loader. And in discussions I've had with Capital Advisory, there is no appetite to replace it. And um, one of the. But we could have convinced them, if we had the need. You know, we. Um, next year you'll definitely see it. <laughs> yeah. Um, put it back on the list. It's a question. It used to be on the list. Oh, it's on the, I mean, oh, it's, it's on the list. It's, it's on the list. It's on the list. And, so, um, that's and one, of the, made one of the reasons I've kind of um, held back and really kind of you know, ramming, it, ramming it through is we're past the prime of what we're going to get back for it. So now that you're, you're not going to get much In other words, back there's no resale it, market for that. But you might as well run beast. it right into the ground. And so, but I'm, his point is that you might, it, it, it may not work. You just did. You just and in the, in the event it doesn't work. Um, if one of my big snow fighters goes down, I can't go rent one of those. I can't go borrow one of those. But you can rent a loader. When a loader goes down, I can rent <coughs> one readily from a rental agency. Um, and I also have the backhoe, which will slower fill the trucks. What is that? Okay. I think we're still getting feedback. I think so, yeah. All right, Ed, thanks. Yeah. Oh, Brett, sorry. One last thing, two points of clarification. Number four on your Chapter 90 road work memo. Green uh, Street East. Uh, could you clarify whether you're coming from Lake Street there? We're coming in from South Main to the tracks. South Main to the tracks, so east. Yep. Right? Okay. Yep. And then number two is, I asked you this, but I didn't hear your answer. Woodland Street, the, uh, the redesign, the two intersection redesigns, is there money in here for those? No. There isn't? No. And how, what is your thought about when the, uh, <clears throat> when traffic safety um, makes a recommendation um, and we bring it forward to the selectmen, uh, we're going to have to request funding. Tons of it. 
I mean, in all honesty, that redesign of the Goulding and Woodland intersection is going to involve the telephone pole. Moving the telephone pole alone is 18,000 from the last quote I got three years ago. So that's, that's only going to go north. That's on us, not on Plus, us. you're talking about an easement taking. That's going to be negotiated with the homeowner. Then you've got the reconstruction of the roadway. So we've already taken action. Sounds like you guys might want further discussion about figuring this out. And appreciate that you're paying attention to it and getting us to the right place. Okay. Thanks for the clarification. Ed, get out of here before somebody else asks a question, all right? Thank you, Ed. Good job. All right, David, we're on to, uh, we're 15 minutes behind, but maybe yeah. we can, since we have no other time listed, we're going to make up time, aren't we? <laughs> By definition. <laughs> uh, basically, the um, annual town meeting checklist that I handed out to you, uh, we posted on the web. The only thing different is um, under number 11 and 12, I previously had those in blue as being bylaw changes but the personnel admin plan um, doesn't require approval by the attorney general so it's just it's in the bylaw but it's not a bylaw so i just changed it to a and those a are color. the um 11 and 12 of the three related to lieutenant bento right lieutenant bento yeah, one of three um, okay there it is I see. and then you can see l8 is the um, fire department hvac project and then Article 18 is the Established Veteran Property Tax Work-Off Program. Yeah. So you just want to point that out. We know that we're going to have to deal with uh, 8L8 uh, on town meeting floor for the HVAC project. We're going to have to be clear on town meeting floor about do 11 and 12 or 12 and 13. We prefer 11 and 12. We're going to have to see how uh, there was still a lot of work to, you know, a little more work to be done of how one might do the veterans tax work off mm -hmm. thing. And, and it may be too complicated to make any uh, headway this town meeting from well, what I'm hearing. But let's well, see let's where it comes. Let's wait the meeting of April 17th. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, we have that on that. That's right. We have that. I'd really like to be able yes. to offer the veterans in Okay. Sherburn, this opportunity if we can yep. do it a, a year earlier rather than wait a, wait right. a year. I got you. Hey, David, just to, to make a point here, I, we voted a number of these items. Um, it would have been our meeting, I think, of the week before the advisory meeting. So, for example, the fuel accounting software, the transportation project, um, the management plan, the Pine Hill School equipment, those were all voted favorably on March, whatever that date was. That's right. Well, the transfer station one was back. Oh, no, in. we took the vote uh, last fall to. Right. But right. there was no Warren article. So at right. this point, oh, okay. we're voting the Warren article. And we voted that. And was it March 27th, Diane? So, no, it was, was, it was March, 20, March 20th, I believe. Yeah, I think we were the week before. Okay. Um, and, and there are others, too. And I have notes on what we voted that day if you need them, but I don't have okay. them with me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, like the regional school one, we voted we to voted. support that. That's it's right. got down consider and blank for, yeah, for BOS supporter. Right, three. Yeah, I think we voted on everything at this stage except the very last one. Yeah, the, right, right. I think so. I just have to chase the dates. And down. and I don't know that we want to vote on that one, which is in our next part of this. Mm-hmm discussion so before we get to that um, con just consider positions and presentations for annual town meeting I think it's my obligation to do a little brief state of the union type of thing at town meeting okay. so I'll plan to do that I'll come up with something and send it through David if we don't have meetings in time and so forth just so you get a general sense of uh, what I'm thinking I would say, okay? Right. And I don't think I'll do any PowerPoints or any of that, but I haven't really, you know, I'm a last minute Louis sometimes to okay. think about what I'm doing. I have asked everyone who's doing a presentation to submit them so we could review them before we see them on the screen. So do we, so do we just going back to some past history, because last year was more of a blur for me as a selectman since it was my first town meeting. 
and I'm sure David, it was a blur for David since he just basically started with it. Um, we don't normally, the selectmen don't normally get up and say, you know, advisory will go to article such and such and take their motions. We occasionally say things to the extent it there's a discussion from the floor and it facilitates things, but we're not up putting up slides or anything like a planning board would do on some of their things in the years past. Or, you know, I'm sure the the governance structure group will have something to say. So are there any that we would likely want to speak towards? Well, I might want to speak on this on this veterans program. Understood if, that. If the board supports it. And yeah. if the board doesn't, maybe I'll... I do it on my own. I have to, have to think about it. I think we're going to speak on the fire department one, the the HVAC. Yeah, we need we, we would need, we to, need do to be that. ready to do that, right? And, th and there yeah, are some need those numbers in a better form than they yeah, were. Yeah, yeah. There are there are some that that I'd like to speak on because they continue stuff from prior years that I've been working on, like like finally getting the transfer station paved. Yeah. That's I've been working on that for three years, so. I, I'd like to say. So, uh, yeah, I think the, 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 the approach is other than a plan of attack on a couple of these that we were all in agreement on, to the extent someone wants to speak towards something, go for it. Right? I mean, that, there's well, no that's, restriction that's on what the, you're right, planning to do. Right, that's been yeah. sort of the history of the yeah. board allows yeah. people to, to speak. But it's at some points if somebody says what's the position of the board of selectmen our rules say you're <coughs> i'll speak to that yeah you're the yeah. spokesman for yeah. the for yeah. the board yeah. yeah yeah and maybe during your and i'll bring this with me just in case i need it more uh -huh. for defense as opposed to normal purpose yeah are there any sponsors or committees that you want in between now and town meeting uh, i can't think of any We've, we've, um, we've had this, everybody. Right? Yeah, did. we've scrubbed this thing. We, yeah. we know what we're dealing with here. Okay. Right? Would you say, Mike, do you have any No, I think thoughts, I, mean, uh, I, I would like to get this vote column filled in because I think we did take votes and some were favorable and some weren't, and we should have that reflected yes, on this form. I agree. Yeah, I had gotten away from doing any of that because it hadn't been done before. Yeah, and, and I really haven't used this myself to... That's fine. Saying, I, mean, it's fine. I, I, I have notes. I have notes too. But if we're going to yeah. have a document like this, we ought to all have the same yes. thing, and it ought to be complete. Be so. Current, and that's not posted on on right. the website. But we yeah. should have it. Yeah. Right now, it's just a tool for us. Right. Yeah. Okay. Any other thoughts? Looking at that, I kind of have to go through my. Uh, this is the one I work with. No, I'm good. I, th I think yeah. we should post a meeting. As we have in the past. You can past. see where we voted on. Yeah. For like an, an hour before the start of town meeting so that all the last minute stuff that comes up when a you know, roof leaks or a boiler blows up, we can deal with it before the start of town meeting. Aren't there any changes in articles? Yes. So we meet early. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we meet agree. a little early and, and continue the meeting th throughout town right. meeting. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. You'll we posted, but I didn't do an hour. But I'll go back and change it. But we're already posted. Yeah, no. That we, we usually we advisory usually meets in the in the, uh, yeah, the cafeteria hall, area, yeah. and we usually meet in the cafeteria yeah. area. And if there yeah, are. Like the time I posted before. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Do you want to go into the capital item? Yeah. The. Uh, yeah, Article 8 items. Right, the ballot questions. Ballot uh, questions. I, I mean, I've reviewed these. And the I'm, last good. I'm good with them. Nice. Yeah, I'm good so with them. Uh, the the only thing, page. Farm Pond Management Plan, Line 6, I thought it, uh, like it shows 25,000. It shows 25,000, which is what was in the original warrant. But my recollection was that it was 24-5 is what advisory five. voted on at the time. That's right. So, so we should change that? Yeah. But the, wasn't that going to be paid for out of free cash? Yeah, but it's but here the, I don't the know. Motion the motion is right, but we have the motions in front of us, so it should be twenty-four five. Yeah, the ballot questions look good to me. And there, there is no ballot question on the final That's page. Yeah, right, right, right. The final page has the um, yeah ballot questions yeah. on the last page. Those, yeah. That's what great. we absolutely need to approve because yeah. it's thirty-five day, thirty-five yeah. days minimum. So I'll take a motion to approve these three ballot questions. 
We're just approving the, the text of them, not the form. They're not going to go out in this exact form. And the only reason I ask is there looks like there's a font change in the middle of one of them, so you have very small writing. And if but it's going to be printed the, from this, we ought to change that before it's printed. No, no, the town clerk's going to put it into an election warrant. Um, and, and the town clerk will be responsible for printing it. And it should come back to us as an election warrant. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Yeah, but the, but the point election. of what we submit to her, let's might as well have the fonts all right. I, I'm with you on that. All right, so can we move to approve this with the font change? Yeah, I don't think we need to include that in the motion, but um, I would second a motion to approve this. Okay, any other discussion? All in favor? Great. Well, that's a good approach we're taking this year on that. And we'll test the town administrator, make sure it gets to okay. the town clerk. So then um, the, we have on here the discussion of the BOS participation in the COA event on Monday <coughs> evening. And uh, I just want to get a sense of where I'm the one that's available. I'm planning to go. I was a little taken aback by the mailer in that it was a little bit of a position taking thing. I don't want to put us be put on the spot. I don't want the selectmen to be put on the spot. We haven't voted on this thing and and I don't think we want to vote on this thing. So you can come up but just uh, I'm just sort of talking out loud too. So I don't know what thoughts you guys had at this stage of the yeah, year. Yeah, I mean, I think we talked about it a little at our last meeting, and I think I w was comfortable with you going to the yes. session, Peter, with the understanding that you're, you know, s speaking or answering questions as, as Peter Caruso, chair of the selectmen, but not for the board. Not for the board, right. Yeah, I, I wasn't available that, that day. Yeah. But do you have any objection to Peter showing up, Paul? I think that's, that's what that's Peter's asking. That's a change. It just got tweaked a little bit when I saw that mail, or it would, you know, went out on... Well, I think it said something about the Board of Selectmen being there. Is that what you're referring to, or did it not? No, it didn't say that. It just it was from the Council on Aging, and it said, I, I mean, I have it with me, just so I don't misquote. You know, it said, learn how this project will help generate important tax revenue. Mm -hmm. See, And that's a little bit of a promotion of the article. And I understand uh, COA has voted on it, and that's consistent with that, and you're hosting this event, and you've invited various committee folks to rep be represented there to answer questions and I'm all for educating voters so that they can make their own decisions of what they view of anything including this particular project and I think it's good that folks are stepping up to want to educate them in this manner so I just want to make sure was my town yes. taxpayer dollars used? No, no taxpayer dollars were used on taxpayer that. Taxpayer dollars. No, no. Who, so who, who's uh, who's uh, permit number? That's the printer's 61. permit. They we used the printer who um, who did it for us. Uh, he used his permit number. So and we uh, it's being paid for by COS is making a contribution to the I actually paid for SOS it. or SOS or I mean SOS is making a contribution. Okay. To and I'm not trying to give anybody a hard time. You understand. I just want to be sure we're because this is a we're challenging not we're not plan, you know, and we're gonna you know I mean the intention is, is that I'm gonna get up and just talk about how the program how this all came to be uh, that the SOS the, the SOS COA is um, uh, is supporting it and uh, Paul's people will get up and give their presentation and then after that it's just gonna be a question and answer period. Right. People will submit questions on index cards. Yep. And. Um, you know, it's not going to be. Um, and I'm having breakfast with the COA tomorrow, so I'm sure I'm going to have a we precursor of what's to come. We had a great, great luncheon today with a group of people. Pulte right. made, yeah. made a uh, presentation. Oh, and yeah. We did the same thing with index cards. The format worked very well. It worked the really questions well. questions were very good. There yeah. were, you know, proponents and opponents there, and it worked out really without a hitch. Everyone had their questions answered, and the comments from the seniors were thank you very much for having this. It was a good session. I learned a lot. And that's that's our goal right. for Monday night. Yeah. Um, we are not putting anyone on the spot. We're having a number of boards represent in case there are questions that are, you know, beyond our particular purview, um, that they will be there to answer. And it does sound like it's an advocacy session, though, right? It's not a balanced, you're not having a pro and a con type. No, we're, not, we're, not having, we're not having a con. We're just having them make the presentation. Uh, you know, and as as the COA 
the COA sponsoring it, we are telling people that we are supporting this, that we have devoted as a board to support this. Right. And, um, you know, but then from there on, it's just an information session for everybody to find out what exactly the project, project is and uh, for them to make their own informed decision. Okay. And questions will be taken. Yeah, right. We'll come out of the hat today and work. Okay. Okay, good. Yeah, I think that's good. No, I appreciate any. I know there's folks that are interested here, so. Great. It's just welcome to. Okay. Uh, so, we'll so we'll see you tomorrow morning. Yes. Uh, and I uh, look forward to it. Thank you. It's a good group. Okay. So, April 17th meeting. We've got a couple. So, we're not meeting next week. We'll meet April 17th, which is good. Two weeks. We got a warrant. Uh, at that point, um, and we've got a couple items already teed up on that, and more to follow. We have the the Veterans Tax Workoff Program article, and then um, Health Insurance GIC discussion. Town Council um, Chris Brown will be in on that. And um, in May, I just wanted to mention that we had a storm water discussion that we were had originally scheduled for this evening that we moved. Okay. To a later date, yep. so we'll do it after town meeting. Stormwater okay. discussion about uh, the GIS, actually. Okay. And the and the funding that was approved for it, and where that okay. funding has gone so far, and what the plans are for the the GIS. Some of the rest of that funding. Yeah, when you say the GIS, you're talking about the mapping systems. Or? The GIS system that was, um, yeah, implemented was paid for out of storm water. I see. Um, are we part of the Massachusetts GIS program? There's a Mass Muni, there's a website where, where they have municipal data online for all Massachusetts yeah. municipalities. Are we part of that whole system? I, I'm not I, aware I mean, of we it. shouldn't be spending money to duplicate something that the state's already doing. Maybe there's value in what we've got, but those things are expensive to maintain, and I know we've talked about them for a long time. Um, right. The state has, in I think, fairly recently really up their game in terms of what they put on line for uh, GIS information. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at I it. I mean, they have assessor parcel level information about the town of Sherburne. I know that. Okay. Because this was um, a contract I think was signed almost two years ago with AECOM to do work. So I'm still getting up to speed on what exactly <coughs> was committed at that point. Okay. For part Part, if not all, of that is on hold because the United oh. States has slowed down the implementation of the National Pollution Elimination and Discharge Permitting right. System for the new permits. Yeah. So we have um, we have that schedule, and um, we just wanted to lay out some sort of that there's some sort of existing budget of what we're doing with that money because I don't there isn't one right now it should be held until the United States issues these generic permits and then that will lay out what the requirements are right and I want to make sure everyone's in the room so we all talk about it and get on the same so page that's for me yeah mm -hmm. okay yeah. good all right um, so we have a warrant to approve. I looked at it. I had nothing of substance. Uh, it's a couple of clarifiers there, and so I would uh, look how thin that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do have. I, that. I did get answers on yours. Um, okay. So I, I would move to approve this uh, warrant Sorry. number 35, the amount of $1,228,778.42. I have a second. All those, any discussion? All those in favor? Great. So while you're signing it, I just want to emphasize that on April 17th, there will be here a discussion of a possible veterans tax abatement program to assist veterans and I'm very excited about that and invite everybody to come. Okay. So now I'm going to move that the Board of Selectmen enter into an executive session to discuss strategy with respect to litigation where an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the town's litigating position and the chair so declares pursuant to General Laws Chapter 30A, 
Section 21, Paragraph 3, 3, with respect to the following case. To discuss strategy with respect to pending litigation, Cannon et al. versus the Town of Sherburn Zoning Board of Appeals and Cannon et al. versus the Town of Sherburn Planning Board. I need a second and a roll call vote. Second. Motion is seconded by Mr. Jimo. Having a second, we'll now have a roll call vote. Mr. Dorensis. Aye. Mr. Jimo. Aye. Mr. Caruso. Aye. Having passed by a vote of three to zero, uh, the open session is now closed. Good night, and we are now moving to executive session. That's a bang of the gavel, huh?